Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto Immortal Mortal Kombat Chunin exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Vsnake Snake and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1 Ancient Bloodlines Disclaimer. This is the only time I will be doing this throughout the entire story, so read it. I do not own either Naruto nor Mortal Kombat. A.N. Malefic Gur knows I'm very interested this fic and left this up for grabs to adopt. I am doing just that with a few changes of my own added to it. Still, I give him props for the writing he had since it made me want to take this up and continue it. Enjoy. Naruto ran to the hospital and found Kakashi waiting in one of the hallways of the hospital. Hey, Kakashi-sensei, I was wondering if you could help me train for the exams. Said Naruto hopefully at his Jounin sensei I'm sorry, Naruto, but I am training Sasuke needs more help than you do since he's going against Gara. Kakashi replied, not even looking up from his itcha itcha. But you saw what Niji did to Hinata. How am I supposed to defeat him? Said Naruto while not liking how his sensei was blowing him off. And you saw what Gara did to Lee Sasuke might get killed. Kakashi fired back with some sternness in his voice. And so will I if I don't get stronger. Can't you just give me a scroll to help me out or something? Naruto pleaded since anything at this point would do. Look, Naruto, I can't train you because I don't have any time to do so, Sasuke has a better chance of winning against Gara than you do against Niji. You can't control your chakra, your jutsu selection is limited to the academy jutsu and a B rank in jutsu, your tojutsu sucks, and your jinjutsu is non-existent. Sasuke has a variety of katan and jutsu, the Sharingan, his clan tojutsu and a few jinjutsu of which I can help him with, said Kakashi, while Naruto shook in anger. So that is it, huh? Naruto whispered to his jounin. You have no talent whatsoever and I can't have my reputation being sullied by you if you lose against Niji. Kakashi continued, still not even looking at Naruto. Had he looked up, he would have seen the pure rage within Naruto's eyes. That was when Naruto finally snapped and his killing intent soared through the roof, making Kakashi look at Naruto. Needless to say, Naruto was mad no, he was downright enraged. So that is how you feel, ha haddock. Kakashi flinched at the way Naruto spat out his surname. Naruto, calm said Kakashi, but was met with surprising killer intent and thought he saw a flash of crimson slit eyes instead of Naruto's blue ones. Calm down. Calm down. Don't you dare tell me to calm fucking down Haddock. After all I have done for this team you would cast me aside. Who was the one who saved your ass when you got captured by Zabuza? Not Sasuke, me. Who was the one who defeated Hakusan? Not Sasuke, me. Who was the one that stood against Orochimaru instead of the cowering like a little bitch for Inache? Not Sasuke, me. You can't even stick to your goddamn motto you told us when we graduated from your test. Hell, Sakura should have been tied to that training post, and you know it. Those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. You are worse than trash you hypocritical piece of shit. Said Naruto with Kakashi looking at him with surprise. Naruto, I Kakashi tried to explain, but Naruto wouldn't hear of it, and again the eyes of the blonde flashed red. Don't address me as if you know me Haddock, from now on, you will only address me as Uzumaki, and nothing else in my presence. Said Naruto while Kakashi didn't like that one bit. I am your sensei Naruto. I will address you how I see fit said Kakashi, but Naruto wasn't done and continued to speak. And another thing, you are not a teacher, hell I bet the closet pervert, Ibisu, can't teach better than you, and he's one of the weakest shinobi I've ever seen with his rank. What kind of sensei gives personal training to one of his students and leaves the rest to fend for themselves? We could have died in the exam against Orochimaru because of your blatant ass kissing of the Achiha, you son of a bitch. Said Naruto angrily. Naruto, that is no way to talk to your sen Kakashi started as he tried to reprimand his volatile student. Sensei. You have no right to have that title. All I see is an Ichiha cocksucker. You know what? I am done with this I am done with this team, you, Waruno and the bitch ass Ichiha. Nah said Kakashi again, but the killer intent the boy was generating spiked and it would be quite impressive if things were differently. Fuck you Haddock. I will never talk to you again. I respected you once, but now I see what I mean to you and it's the same belief as the others. You fucking hypocrite of an asshole. Go ahead and go train your Ichiha fuck buddy. Know that when I do beat Niji, your precious Asuke is next, and I'm going to beat him within an inch of his life," said Naruto before stalked off from the hospital while nurses and doctors parted the way in case he would try to lash out. Stop Naruto. I commanded. Said Kakashi, being the dumb fuck, tried to stop Naruto, who grabbed his wrist and spun on his heel with a kunai in hand and sliced his itch itch paradise in half. Never. Ever. Put your damn hands on me again, Haddock, or I will kill you even if you were my father's student. Said Naruto snarled out his threat. Hek knows. How? The Sandame swore to never tell him anything. 
thought Haddock, as he was too stunned to even try and stop Naruto while watching the boy storm out of the hospital and onto the streets of Konoha. Konoha streets, I can't believe that hypocritical bastard. Naruto thought as he walked down the street. When the villagers saw him they immediately started glaring at him. However, they were surprised when he glared right back at him with some added killer intent. He even backhanded a grown man who thought it would be very funny to trip the demon brat and watch him fall. As soon as he did that the crowds parted for him to go through, not willing to agitate the demon brat even more than he already was. His own heightened hearing picked up their frantic whispering. Did you see that? I told you he was a demon. Only a monster would attack a poor, defenseless man. We should have killed him when he was a baby. Monster. Demon. Freak. Naruto was barely able to restrain himself from lashing out at the idiots he swore to protect. Hold it Naruto. They're just ditching for an excuse to bitch to the councils to have the old man punish you about Naruto since it had happened in the past. So with considerable effort, Naruto calmed down slightly and merely glared back so they knew if they did anything first, he'd see they lost a few limbs. He was frightened of the people at first, after the first attack on his life at the age of four, but after the entire situation was explained to him during the incident with Mizuki well let's face it people he was mad. I mean, who wouldn't be after finding out that the reason the entire civilian population and most shinobi hated you because of something outside of your power. He got even madder when he found out that the one who did this to him, the Yandame Hokage, was also his father, which was kept from him, and he had learned from the Forbidden Scroll of Sealing. What parent does this type of shit to their own children? The Yandame was an idiot for putting so much faith in so many idiots. Naruto was also mad at the Sandame Hokage for keeping this news from him, although nowhere near as mad at his father and kept this information from him for so long. The only real reason he wasn't madder at the old man was because he executed all of the people who ever physically harmed him. However, he couldn't do anything about the people who abused him psychologically. The old man also didn't know that most of the teachers at the academy were messing with his grades 24-7. Or if he did was doing nothing about it out of fear of losing favor with the village and being their Hokage. Naruto himself had checked and if they hadn't messed with his grades, he would have finished a third place in the class, with the Uchiha, still, at first place, the teachers probably raised all of his grades, the bastards, and Shino Aburam at second place. I can't stand this place anymore, I want to leave and never look back. Thought Naruto, as he felt his rage building inside his head. Unfortunately, Naruto was so angry that he failed to notice a group of Jounin talking to each other, and how the blonde being one of the contestants in the Chunin exam finals. They felt a boy should be injured beyond repair, unable to not only make it to the exam finals, but being a Konoha shinobi altogether, and decided to do the Hyuga clan a nice service in helping them out by removing the so-called opposition from play. The group waited until Naruto headed for a more secluded location before striking the blonde and began beating him within an inch of his life like so many had done before in the past. Not knowing a reptilian figure was watching the events before him unfold with hunger in his eyes, and he was not Orochimaru. Filthy humans. To think the raid in the Elder God favors you. Why he does I will never understand. Said the figure making the shinobi around the bleeding Yuzumaki to look around them to see no one was there. Who's there? Show yourself. Said the leader of the group before he cried out in pain when an invisible clawed hand went through his torso. Why do that human? When this is so much easier. Said the reptilian voice before the invisible creature bit into the shinobi's neck and quickly slaughtered the other shinobi before they could attack. A monster said one shinobi seeing the creature become visible, but wished he had not, as the creature dripped acid from his mouth and shot it at the dying man. Fool. Now what to do with you? Your scent seems familiar. Tainted in a sense. No. Not tainted. Locked away. Yes. That's what I smell. But why is it familiar? Wait. Could it be he's, but I thought the child died shortly after birth. And that was ages ago before the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament that vile sorcerer failed to secure Earthrealm in the name of Outworld. Could this weak child be his progeny's long line of progeny? I must take him before the emperor and quickly given the nature of his wounds, said the lizard-like creature picking up the unconscious bleeding boy before using the amulet given to him to traverse the realms. But the elder gods. Elder gods, I ask of you for permission to stop Reptile from taking the boy to the Shao Kahn. Said Raiden while he stood before his fellow elder gods and saw each of them looking back at him. No Raiden. You will not stop this. We forbid it, said one elder god to Raiden's right. The boy is a threat to Earthrealm if he falls into the hands of Shao Kahn. Surely you see that, said Raiden while the Elder Gods frowned at him. You set things in motion when you took the offspring of Shao Kahn and Sindel away from them all those years ago. You brought his progeny to Earthrealm to be the final deterrent against the Emperor in a last resort, should the conquest of Earthrealm be assured, and instead that boy grew to become what the people now call in this time the Sage of Six Paths, said another Elder God behind Raiden. It was necessary. 
I couldn't risk Shao Kahn's offspring growing up to be stronger than his sire and lead a campaign against Earthrealm. We would have never survived had the child been raised by his father. The same will happen with this boy holding the strongest of the Biju in him. Said Raiden with the eyes of the Elder Gods glowing around him. We know about the boy's burden Raiden. Uzumaki Naruto is his descendant, born in Earthrealm with the blood of the Emperor Shao Kahn of Outward, running in his very veins, and therefore can traverse between the two realms without reprimand from any of us. However, Shao Kahn is still forbidden from invading Earthrealm, and we have long since ended the Mortal Kombat tournaments to ensure the safety of the realms long after his final attempt at invading it. If we allow you to go through with this, then all the restraints put in place to stop Shao Kahn from invading Earthrealm will be cast down, and nothing will stop the Emperor from having his vengeance for what you did ages ago. That is our decision on this matter Raiden. Cross us on this matter and you will be stripped of your status as an Elder God before being cast down, said another Elder God in front of the Raiden. Sighing in defeat, all Raiden could do was watch events play out and hope his actions many years ago didn't come back to haunt him. Outworld Emperor's Palace. Master Shao Kahn, I bring something of importance before you and requires your full attention on this matter, said Reptile, as he kneeled before the Emperor of Outworld and holding the child out before the man. And this dying child. You bring this weak thing from Earthrealm before me. For what reason Reptile? Said Shao Kahn while seeing the blood from the boy staining his floor. He is no mere child my Emperor. I have come across something of great importance in my travels into Earthrealm, said Reptile, while the Emperor did not look impressed. Speak. Tell me what you've learned that it would include bringing this child to me, said Shao Kahn with his guards looking ready to strike down the lizard warrior, should their emperor command it. This child he is of your bloodline. Said Reptile with Shao Kahn's eyes widening and was instantly upon him with a fist to the reptilian man's neck. You lie. I have had only one child brought into the world and my son was proclaimed dead shortly after breathing his first breath as Prince of Outworld. Said Shao Kahn with the pain of losing his progeny still hurting him to this day. I do not understand it either my emperor, but I swear to you this boy has a scent similar to your own, and it can only be possible if he were of your bloodline. He also has strange marking on him that could only be that of an elder gods, though it reeks of death, said Reptile seeing Shao Kahn look at the boy on the ground before nudging Naruto onto his back and ripped open the shirt to see the seal. Shao Kahn knew the marking on the boy as they were the marking of an elder god who was connected to the death and there was only one elder god connected with that. Of course the Elder God had fallen far, losing his title, and simply being a god of death like Raiden had once been the god of thunder. This was Shinnok's power on the boy's seal. Bring me my best healers now. Said Shao Kahn to a servant who bowed quickly and then rushed off to obey the command. I do not believe your son died shortly after his birth my emperor, said Reptile with the ruler of Outworld touched the boy gently, a sense of something long since dead rise up and grasp his heart in an iron grip. Then what happened to him? Why is my legacy so weak? said Shao Kahn, as he used his power to gaze into the boy's mind and see his memories, only to become enraged at what he was seeing. The beatings by mobs, the constant abuse suffered at the hands of those maggots, followed by the lack and sabotage of the boy's overall training. But what really made Shao Kahn's blood boil was this was leading back to a memory taking place mere days after the child's birth, to reveal a secret kept from the Emperor of Outworld. Flashback days after Naruto's birth, you must ensure the boy doesn't reach his full potential Sandame Hokage. He has the blood of a powerful being running in his veins that could shatter the world you know, and with the Kaiubi sealed inside of him, now will make the risk all the greater, said Raiden in the Sandame Hokage's office. Hiraya came to me earlier about the child of prophecy the Toad Elders spoke of, and I fear given the boy's heritage combined with this new information, Naruto's growth has to be crippled. I'll see to it. The news of him being the Jinchuriki of Kaiubi will see to that when I make it public, said the Sandame, while Raiden nodded and looked at the boy. Make sure the boy is strong enough to defend your village, but nothing more than what is being asked of you, and make sure agents are in place to kill him, should any of that kind of power manifest itself. The bloodline of the Emperor must not reach its apex in this realm, and given what he now holds, I am tempted to strike the child down now if not for the Elder Gods forbidding it, said Raiden with his hand covered in lightning. And flashback, Raiden. He took my son from me. Curse you Thunder God. Yelled Shao Kahn before he punched a nearby pillar and turned it into rubble. This boy is your legacy, said Reptile in shock, while many of the Emperor's generals and servants looked on with horror at what befell their leader. This complex seal is empowered by none other than Shinnok himself. Prepare a room for the child and tend to his injuries immediately. Know that if he dies, you will beg for the Elder Gods to save you and the demons of the Netherum to torture you for eternity in their domain, said Shao Kahn, with the healers arriving and armed guards assisting in taking the boy to an assigned room to help Naruto recover. I saved the boy from being beaten by the people in his village my emperor. 
they were speaking of him partaking in some kind of tournament called the Chuanin exams and how they were going to make sure he didn't compete, said Reptile, with Shao Kahn's eyes narrowing and the fire from them creating smoke from the intensity. You have done me a great service Reptile. Name your reward and I will grant it if such a wish is within my power to grant, said Shao Kahn seeing Reptile bow before him. I can ask for nothing from you my emperor, but if it were possible I would like to help train the boy and see his development grow, said Reptile with Shao Kahn nodding in agreement. Done. Now leave my sight. I must think on what to do regarding my legacy, said Shao Kahn, seeing Reptile bow and leave the emperor's throne room, while the man's mind was going through what he knew of the boy's own memories. And the creature he held. Some time later, Naruto stirred awake as he felt consciousness reach him and saw he was in some strange place that was quite dreary in a horror movie kind of fashion. His vision was blurry at first, but Naruto could see and feel the dark energies of this place he was in. Surprisingly enough, the blonde didn't feel afraid of such things, but rather was comfortable in them like it was natural and wished to embrace more of what was making it happen. Wincing slightly, Naruto noticed his hand above the bedsheet was bandaged and frowned since he had always healed fast. Ever since the forest of death and the fight with Orochimaru his whole body felt out of sync. At least it did until now and his body felt better. Far better actually. He hadn't felt like this since ever. Are you okay, young one? He heard a deep voice above him ask. Yay, I think so my holy shit you're huge. Naruto exclaimed as he looked up to the person he had walked into. The guy stood at 7'3 and had rather broad shoulder. He had a helmet on his head that spoke of a warlord, the front of the mask was made of bone, his eyes were crimson red and had some wrinkles covering his face. He was wearing armor along his shoulders and his elbows that gleamed in the light of the room with dried blood. His torso had had leather straps forming a X shape while a dragon-like symbol was at the center of it. Obviously, said Shao Kahn with a smirk knowing his form was intimidating. I'm sorry if I stated the obvious, but I've never seen anyone like you before, or even this very place I'm in now, said Naruto, while getting up looked up at the man now with a questioning look. One of my agents found you being attacked and brought you here to be healed, said the Emperor of Outworld, while a female servant wearing clothes that would have made a certain Toad Sanin get a nosebleed enter with clothing for Naruto to wear before she left the room. Oh. Thank you. Um where am I exactly? said Naruto while getting dressed behind a portable screen in black combat boots, black pants with a red sash, and in red armband with a symbol of a dragon and black outline on it. We are in the realm known as Outworld. Follow me, answered the man before leaving the room, never once stopping, as he continued through the palace, and Naruto right behind him. Say what now? Naruto frantically yelped as he couldn't believe what he was hearing and saw Shao Kahn turn to face him. You see, there are more dimensions out there. One being Earth Realm. Your world said the emperor while hating the fact the boy was born in Earthrealm. Earthrealm? said Naruto still not understanding. Yes. There is Earthrealm, Hell, the Netherum, Heaven, Limbo, Edenia, Outworld, and then there are the hundreds of different worlds that have been joined with Outworld, said Shao Kahn, before walking into the throne room, where solders and servants of all ranks bowed to the two of them. So you're telling me that there are like a thousand different worlds out there, and right now I'm in one of those worlds. Naruto asked, his mind had just been completely blown and rightfully so given this information. Yes. My agent Reptile, who saved you from the attack told me you are competing in a tournament of sorts and I wish to help you win. How about I train you for these Shuanin exams Reptile told me about? Said Shao Kahn, while Naruto was excited by the offer. And what could you teach me? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto was startled however, as the man simply disappeared from right in front of him, like he was a ghost. The boy started to look around, trying to spot the man before he felt hands on his shoulders and was startled to see the giant of a man standing right behind him with a smirk on his aged face. For one, I can teach you how to do that. Said Shao Kahn knowing the boy would need a visual aid based teacher to learn. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me. Naruto yelled chanted as he looked at the man with stars in his eyes. Ha. 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 Very well then. Follow me. The emperor commanded while laughing as he turned around and walked towards the inner sanctum of his home, with Naruto soon rushing after him before a portal of sorts opened with the two walking through it. When Naruto surfaced on the other side of the portal, he immediately took in his new surroundings and was shocked at the sight of it. He was standing in an arena possibly twice if not three times the size of the one Kanoha had, it was filled with violent-looking areas meant to cause intense physical pain and suffering to all who dared set foot in it. This place had large creatures chained down, watched over by their trainers, and other kinds of beings now entering the arena that didn't look fully human. He then saw the tall man motioning him over as he walked towards the massing army of what seemed like warriors from Naruto guessing were under this guy's command and wondered just what he had gotten himself into here. Where in the world are we? Naruto questioned. We are in my arena. 
here is where only the best warriors of Outworld fight, die, and if they are strong enough live to fight again. We are going to be here for a while to get you into shape for your tournament. Said the regal warlord with a smirk on his mask face. Really? Naruto asked with the emperor nodding. If in your current health, lack of proper training, and teacher to fix the damage done to you, this will take exactly one year, said the warlord in front of the boy. What? But the Chuanin exam finals are in one month, not one year. Naruto now screamed towards the man, who just laughed and acted like it was nothing. Fret not boy. That's the greatness of Outworld, as that one year here is equal to month in Earthrealm, and you will return in that time to compete in your tournament. Said Shao Kahn after laughing at Naruto's response. So basically, I can get a whole year's is worth of training done in place of one month I would spend back home. Naruto asked with his mouth wide open in amazement. Yes, said Shao Kahn seeing the boy's eyes light up. Fucking awesome. He said with a small devilish smirk, while Shao Kahn smirked and laughed at his response. Reminds me of myself when I was at that childish age thought Shao Kahn seeing a lot of himself in the boy. Look out Kanoha, you wanted a demon, well you're going to get one, and he's not going to be the nice anymore. Thought Naruto knowing his chance of winning against Niji just went up in his favor. Happy to see that you're in such a good mood. Said the emperor with a small chuckle. Considering who I'm going to unleash my newfound power on when this is over. Hell yeah I'm in a good mood, said Naruto with Shao Kahn smirking. Good. That seal on you was having problems working earlier, as a fresh yet crude seal was placed over it and had to be removed. Whatever energy you had before that has been returned and can now fight with all the power you possess, said the emperor with a boy looking shocked that he knew about the biju and that another seal was on him. So that was what that gay snake did thought Naruto while putting a hand where the seal his father placed on him now revealed itself from his touch. Now, onto Busey said Shao Kahn, but was caught off by the boy. Wait. Said Naruto quickly. What? Said Shao Kahn with what little patience thinning. You never told me your name sir, said Naruto curiously. An evil gleam appeared in the old man's eye as Naruto asked this question. He then started chuckling but, before long, it turned into full-blown maniacal laughter. Managing to look scary as hell, as well as scaring the shit out of Naruto all at the same time. The old man finally calmed down before looking at Naruto with an evil grin plastered on his face. I didn't tell you, huh? Well, listen well boy because I will be only saying this once. The man remarked before clearing his throat. I am the defier of the elder gods. The slayer of the dragon king Anaga. The greatest ruler to have ever lived. I am the emperor of Outworld. I am Shao Kahn the conqueror and I am above all things your forefather. Yelled Shao Kahn, just what the hell have I gotten myself into? Thought Naruto nervously and yet was excited all the same before the last part reached his mind. And abruptly fainted. It was going to be a long year. The Noha one month year later chewing an exam stadium, it was a bright day in the leaf village. The sun's rays were falling upon the village, creating bright streams of light through the many trees that the village was named after. Children could be seen playing within the streets, and teenagers and adults of all ages and genders were shopping for goods, while birds could be heard singing from above them. The sounds of cheering people could be heard all over the Hidden Leaf village, as shinobi, civilian, nobles, and commoners alike had all gathered to witness the Chunin exam finals. As he looked over the village from his seat in the cage booth, Saratobi Hiruzen couldn't help but be pleased with the turnout. In one section of the stand sat the members of the newly dubbed Kanoha 12, which consisted of the members of the newly famed Rookie 9, along with the members of Team Guy who hadn't made it to the finals. The name was given to them because of all of the genin of Kanoha, who had been placed in the Chuanin exams, all 27 teams, it was the four rookie teams that passed the second stage and made it to the preliminary rounds. Sitting with them were the Jounin senseis of the teams, minus one, each of them looking down at the students who had made it past the prelims in pride. On the arena floor seven figures could be seen standing in a line facing the cage booth. Six of those figures were the genin who were about to compete in their matches, Aburam Shino, Hai Uganiji, Nara Shikamaru, Sabaku no Gara, Sabaku no Tamari and Sabaku no Kankuro, with the last member being the Jounin proctoring this match. The proctor, Shiranyui Gemma, had dark brown hair reaching to his neck and brown eyes. He was wearing his forehead protector like a bandana and the standard Jounin outfit of dark blue pants and a long-sleeved blue shirt with his Jounin flak jacket over it. Tsuritobi frowned as he saw that they were missing three ninja, Kanuta Dosu, Ichiha Sasuke and Yuzumaki Naruto. He knew that Dosu was dead, his corpse having been found by his Anbu just last night, and Ichiha Sasuke was with Kakashi, so it was a given that he would either make it at the late minute or turn up late. However, that Naruto was not standing down there was worrying. He knew the blonde would never miss a chance like this. Tsuritobi couldn't help but wonder if something had happened to him. Sir there is still no sign of Ichiha Sasuke, but we have a few squad searching for him, said a Jounin before he leaned over to whisper into his cage's ear. I see, said the Sandame simply. Sir do you think it's possible Orochimaru may have already gotten to the boy? 
questioned the man. The Sandane didn't let his subordinate know what he was thinking, with several decades of ninja experience, he had learned the art of keeping his face emotionless. However, the thought that Orochimaru may already have gotten his hands on Sasuke was worrying. The boy had been with Kakashi, and while Saratobi planned on having words with how the man had taken up favoritism with his squad, the Sharingan toting Jounin was still one of his best shinobi. Before he could reply to the Jounin's words however, he caught sight of the pair of white and blue robes out of the corner of his eye. Upon seeing them he turned to greet the arriving Kazakiage. Kazakiage Dono, you must be tired from the long journey, he greeted cordially. Not at all, the man replied in his calm manner as he sat down. Though it's a good thing the exams were held here this time. Well you are still young the trip may have been too much for you Hokage-sama. Perhaps it's time you choose a fifth Hokage. Said the Kazakiage while Saratobi gave a hearty laugh and waved the man's comments off. Please don't treat me like an old man. The fire in me still burns as strongly as it did 20 years ago. I've still got a few more years left before needing to find a successor, said the Sandane before looking at the contestants below. It seems we have two missing. Said the Kazakiage upon taking his seat, eyes roving over to the field, and the Sandane nodded gravely. Standing up Suratobi gave his announcement thank you for coming. I would like to welcome you all to Kanoha's Shunin exam. Finals. We will now begin the main tournament between the 10 participants who made it through the preliminaries. The crowd began to cheer as the Hokage finished his announcement. Saratobi nodded towards Genma who turned to look at the contestants. I'm the proctor of the finals my name is Shiranyui Genma. So you all know who you are facing correct everyone nodded take a look. This is the lineup for the main matches, said Shiranyui Genma held up a sheet of paper with the matches shown on it. Great a change up with me fighting a girl. Joy is me thought Shikamaru sarcastically since he didn't want to fight girls. As you can see there will be 5 matches in the first round. Now while the arena is different, the same rules from the preliminaries apply. Any questions? said Genma looking at the current contestants. Nobody spoke as Genma now began the exams. Will Yuzumaki Naruto and Hai Uganiji please step forward? All other contestants go to the fighters booth. Inoha Stadium stands. Sasu-kun is not here neither is Naruto either. Ino said as she sat by her best friend turned enemy. Who cares, it's not like he's even going to be able to beat Niji. Now he is a genius, just like Sasu-kun. Sakura sneered. But Sakura that's your own teammate. At least have some kind of faith in him said Ino, slightly put off by how casually Sakura just brushed off Naruto and hoping Niji would hurt the fellow blonde. The day I have faith in that Baka is the day hell freezes over, said Sakura simply. Kanoha Stadium stands down inside. Yugao, Heide, Kurinai, Anko, Hana, and Asuma sat within the crowd as they watched the proceedings. Kakashi was late with his student, though no one really cared for either one, after hearing how the Jounin blew Naruto off to train the Ichiha personally. This fight is going to be fun. Anko said spoke with glee. Kurinai looked at her best friend and smiled, yes, I agree. Hey, coughed and spoke, so who do you think is going to win this fight? This got everyone's attention more than likely it's going to be the Hayuga I'm afraid. It's a shame because I know the Yuzumaki Gaki is looking to avenge the Hayuga heiress after what happened in the prelims. Yuga replied. Well, you never know. Yuzumaki Naruto is known for surprises, he just might pull off an upset and throwing everyone for a loop, Asuma spoke, since Naruto had a history doing that. Let's all see shall we? Hana interjected wanting to see the fight. Arena floor. HMPH, looks like the loser decided not to show up after all. Not like it would have made a difference any, he was fated to lose today and the day after that. Sneered Niji while thinking his victory would only bring down Hinata further. He was silenced however, as he heard a strange sound behind him and turned to see what it was with wide eyes along with everyone else. They saw a large circular orange portal open and the sound of heavy ground shaking footsteps coming from the portal entrance, with the shadow of the figure coming from it being revealed to the light. So, you decided to show up after all, huh, Luz said Niji stopped talking however, as he took in the appearance of the person walking towards him and Genma. Is is that Yuzumaki Naruto? Thought the Jounin Proctor while wondering if he needed to have his eyes checked or if he was in the twilight zone. Dawn was the 4-3 orange loving knucklehead of a ninja. What stood in his place was a whole new warrior altogether. This boy, no, man stood at an impressive 5'7", his spiky blonde hair was now down to his shoulders and held in the back by a ponytail. He had gone from scrawny to ripped, he had muscles bulging damn near everywhere. It was really visible since he was shirtless with black X-shaped leather going across his torso with a dragon emblem holding it together in the middle. He was wearing black Anbu-style pants with a dark red belt, black combat boots, had on dark red shin and forearm guards with jagged edge greaves, black gauntlet stained in dried blood, and he had his Kanoha headband loosely hanging around his neck. Naruto even had what appeared to be a dragon emblem tattooed on his left pectoral. The dragon was a metallic gray surrounded by a black circle looking menacing in the sunlight. 
They only knew it was Naruto due to the whisker marks on his cheeks being thicker than usual, as the usual spiky blonde hair was covered by a metal helmet with a bone-like front that protected the upper part of the face, and his blue eyes were now crimson red with slit pupils. The crowd and more specifically everyone from Kanoha was stunned silent at his new appearance. The only reason that they were able to identify this new person as Naruto Uzumaki was because of the blonde spiky hair and the three whisker marks he had on each cheek. The stadium was completely silent for one moment. Then it erupted into sound with a few simple words they spoke and thought next. What the fuck? Chapter 2 Test Your Might. A.N. Again this is adopted from the original author. I informed him some time ago I was interested in this and wanted to do this. So props to his work that helped provide the key foundation I needed. Enjoy. The stadium erupted into frantic chatter as everyone was trying to find out what happened to the demon brat. What the fuck? I thought he was supposed to be some scrawny looking idiot wearing kill me orange. No no not th that that thing standing down there. Said one person in the stands. Oh my kami, he's so sexy. Said one woman not from Kanoha. What the hell happened to the brat? Said one leaf shinobi of Chunin rank. Do you think it was the fox? Said a civilian whispering to another. This seemed to be the collective thoughts of all within the stadium. Stands. That's Naruto. Nino asked shouted as she saw the new and very much improved version of the blonde knucklehead. Sakura was staring too but was in denial. She was trying to convince herself that there was no one who could look better than her Sasuke. Choji was frozen in mid-chew and staring at Naruto. Kiba was smirking. He had a feeling that the match with Niji was going to be extremely brutal. Anata was currently holding her nose to prevent the ever-massive nosebleed that would have erupted when she saw Naruto's muscles. Down in the arena Tamari was staring at Naruto while trying to hold back her own with less noticeable effort. Wow. This kid went from loudmouth squirt to hot stud in less than one month. I hope he's still single. Hubba. 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 She thought while her face was red. So Tamari's got a crush on him. Blackmail material. Thought Kankuro was noting the look on his sister's face and was grinning as he knew that he could use this as blackmail material for later. Shikamaru eyes were wide, but he managed, but he still had that bored look on his face. Troublesome, he said out loud knowing Naruto's face was in the dictionary when it came to the term. Maybe he can help me prove my existence, thought Gara had on a slight sadistic smile as he stared at the blonde. Shino was wondering what had happened to the boy that made him change so drastically in such a short time. He was also starting to wonder how he was able to do that thing when he entered the arena. Arena floor. Then Naruto Uzumaki. Genma stuttered asked, just as surprised as everyone else. Naruto simply nodded towards Genma as he focused his attention on a still stunned Niji. Damn boy, been hitting them weights. Chuckled the proctor. And them steroids apparently thought many of the Jounin senseis in the stands. Naruto simply chuckled. HN, so the dead last finally decided to show up. Niji snidely remarked, finally getting out of his shock. Don't you know that no matter what you do or however you look, you will still lose. Because fate has decreed that I shall be winning today. Naruto simply stared at him as if he were a bug, which in Naruto's eyes he was. Now the match between Niji Hayuga and Naruto Uzumaki will begin. Genma said smirking. Genma then decided to get the hell out of there because he had a feeling that this was going to be a rough one. The other contestants all filed out of the arena and went up to the fighter's box. Up in the stands two Chuanin, Kitetsu and Yuzumo, both sat and watched the match. The kids come far, Izumo said simply. Yeah, Kitetsu said, but is the kid strong enough to fight the prodigy of the Hayuga clan? In the arena Niji faced Naruto and crossed his arms. Give up now, he said, there is no way that you can defy fate. When Niji didn't receive a reply he scowled at Naruto. Are you listening to me? Said Niji with Naruto simply stayed silent, watching Niji like a predator stalks its prey. While his mind was going back to when he was training with Shao Kahn and the power he wielded to bring his legacy to this point, along with the truth of his heritage. A heritage that was centuries if not a millennia in the making that was denied thanks to a fearful god seeking to usurp evil and his progeny. Flashback Outworld Arena, again. Said Shao Kahn seeing his son's long line descendant brutally fighting a small army of Tarkatan demons and doing impressively well. The boy had gone on a much more nutritional diet after a combination of Shao Kahn's own power fused Kaiubi with Naruto, which wasn't the most pleasant thing given the memories of the fox and growing of Naruto's body structure growing. It had been a very painful ordeal, which was saying something given Naruto's past experience with pain and could not hold back the screams that came from his mouth. When it was over, Naruto was bedridden for a week, the means to use his body were basically reset, and the next month in Outworld was spent relearning how to use it. Though if there was one thing in Yuzumaki with the ancient bloodline of Emperor Shao Kahn had going for him, it was being a quick learner, and in Outworld it was a necessity. When Naruto was told how the elder god Raiden had set things in motion for the abuse suffered at the hands of the village with the Sandame Hokage and to stunt his growth simply due to the fear of some kind of prophecy, well the boy was pissed off. 
I mean super pissed off that several soldiers were on the receiving end of Naruto's wrath. Shao Kahn further explained how the rules of the Elder Gods allowed Naruto to travel back and forth from Outworld to Earthrealm without their interference. So the blonde could visit any time and even seek Shao Kahn's advice on matters since he was still young. If the Elder Gods tried anything, it would cause the laws they set in place to shatter and allow the Emperor of Outworld the right to invade Earthrealm, if not demand a restart of the Mortal Kombat tournaments to decide the fate of all the realms. The end result of Naruto training had allowed TH Boy to gain a great deal of muscle to his body, leading to his one year of training in Outworld, which made many of the female servants blush and look at him with lust. A fact Shao Kahn would mention from time to time in front of Naruto and the Yuzumaki took with a sense of pride in making the female gender weak in the knees. Though well muscle was a given with all the training, Naruto also developed inhuman agility, which he acquired in combination of Shao Kahn's painful teaching methods for him to dodge and Kaiubi's fox-like agility to outmaneuver others in a pinch. Anyone else for me to take down my forefather? Said Naruto with Shao Kahn smirking and snapped his fingers from his position on the throne. Boro. Kintaro. Shiva. Called Shao Kahn, with a trio of Shokin now ready to fight the Uzumaki. I had to ask, said Naruto before the Shokin attacked him and with the intent to kill. Then flashback, Niji just smirked, thinking his opponent was afraid, and activated his Byakugan. Don't feel like talking. Fine, let's get this beating started. He said smirking. Watch closely Hanabi. Hiashi Hayuga, the patriarch of the Hayuga clan, said to his youngest daughter. Why? Said Hanabi while staring at this monster of a shinobi facing her cousin. There is no other Hayuga who has blood thicker than Niji's. He is a true Hayuga prodigy, said Hiashi, though even he felt some form of fear at this. The young girl simply nodded showing that she was listening. She watched wanting to see if the boy really could fight. In the arena, Niji charged at Naruto, who just stood there and seemed unafraid of being hit by the infamous Tejutsu of the Hayuga clan. Just as Niji was about to strike him, he moved skillfully to the left hand at a speed even Niji couldn't track with his Byakugan eyes and backhanded the Hayuga away from him. Niji rolled about 10 feet away from Naruto before stopping and quickly getting to his feet in shock. What the hell was that? Thought Niji, as he nursed the right side of his face. He wasn't anywhere near that strong or fast when he fought the Inuzuka. One month of training shouldn't have given him this much power. Whoa. Were the collective thoughts of everyone who knew Naruto and knew that he wasn't anywhere near this strong a month ago. Hmm, so it seems you've gotten a little bit better since your last fight. Doesn't matter since you'll still lose to me like my useless cousin did in the Chunin exam prelims taunted the Hayuga as he was now cautiously stepped towards Uzumaki and saw him being unaffected by the comment. But it still doesn't mean a damn thing. Niji charged at Naruto and unleashed a barrage of Juken strikes. He became frustrated as Naruto simply dodged and deflected all of his strikes. Holy shit, this is the kid that used to go around wearing an orange jumpsuit, shouting about how he would be Hokage one day. Izumo said in amazement. He just might be able to do it. Katetsu chimed in. In the stands Hanabi was currently staring at Naruto. She had been taught that power was everything and that was currently showing. God damn it stand still so I can hit you. Yelled out a furious Niji while Naruto simply laughed at the Hayuga as he continuously danced around the Juken strikes. Niji had a small moment of triumph as he finally managed to nail Naruto in his left arm. However, triumph was replaced with pain as Naruto used that exact same arm to punch Niji across his face, sending him flying back a good 15 feet. The stadium was once again shocked as they saw the supposed dead last loser strike the Hayuga prodigy. Really Niji? Is this the best you have to offer? How disappointing. Naruto finally spoke, shocking everyone by his now deep voice was while he taunted the Hayuga with a smirk and he saw Niji go red in the face upon hearing him comment. Disappointing. 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 I'll show you a fucking disappointment. Yelled the enraged Hayuga as he slipped into a new stance that had many of the Hayuga clan members in the crowd gasping in shock. You're within my field of deviation. But that, he charged straight at Naruto. Had he had a clear head instead of an anger-driven one, he would have noticed that Naruto didn't move at all and instead let Niji get within striking range. 8 trigram 64 palms. Stated Niji as he started using his clan's prized skill to close all of Naruto's chakra points. Had he paid attention he would have noticed that Naruto never even flinched when Niji started his assault, nor did he move an inch from his spot. What the hell has Naruto been up to this past month? Asked a gobsmacked Kiba. That's what I want to know too thought Sakura, well her anger at the blonde being this strong only infuriated her further since she felt Sasuke should be the one with this power and not the monster fighting Niji. He's taking all of those Juken strikes as if they're nothing. Hey Hinata, can you check and see if Niji is even closing any of Naruto's chakra points? Said Kiba knowing his own teammate could see what was going on. H hi. Muttered the shy Hayuga heiress as she activated her Byakugan before gasping. What? 
What do you see? Said Ino seeing Hinata staring intently at Naruto. A Amazi NNG, Niji Nai San's chakra hasn't even scratched any of Naruto Kun's chakra points. She said, much to the amazement and disbelief of all of those around her. Bullshit. Sneered Sakura at Hinata. What? Said Ino surprised by Sakura continued putting down of Naruto in this fight. Your Byakugan must have a defect in it. There is absolutely no way in hell that that Baka is withstanding all of those hits. He must be cheating somehow, stupid Nerubaka. Said Sakura, while well, Hinata ignored the dumb fangirl however, as she looked away from where Niji was striking Naruto with his Juken strikes and allowed her X-ray vision eyes to travel a little bit farther down south on the body of her crush. Oh oh mmmmi, H-E-S so big. She thought as she fainted with a little blood leaking down her nose. Hinata. Hinata. What happened? Would she collapse? Questioned a frantic Kiba as he saw his teammate crush knocked out in her chair with blood leaking out of her nose and a perverted smile on her face. Back to the fight, well what the hell? Huffed a tired Niji as he finished his assault. Why haven't any of your chakra points closed? Is that it? Because honestly, that. Was. Pathetic. Asked aboard Naruto as he stared at Niji looking at him at shock at first before anger replaced it. This isn't possible. He should be weak. Pathetic. A commoner in his truest form. So how is it possible he's doing this? Thought Niji simply gritted his teeth as this commoner actually had the audacity to mock him. A member of the strongest clan in Kanoha, the Hyuga clan. Since you're beginning to bore me, began Naruto with a sigh, he immediately put Niji on his guard, I guess I'll go on the offensive now instead of defensive. Niji didn't have any time to react as Naruto suddenly vanished from the spot he was in and appeared directly in front of him. He was knocked up in the air as Naruto hit him with an uppercut. Before he could fly away however, Naruto quickly grabbed him by the ankle, turned around, and slammed Niji face first into the ground so hard the ground created spiderweb cracks. This caused many within the crowd to cringe at the impact from the sound and the violent vibrations. He then lifted Niji up by the back of his head and started repeatedly punching him in the stomach. Many of the viewers started cringing after every hit, hell, a few threw up. The impact of each hit echoed across stadium. You could literally hear Niji's ribs cracking and breaking. Wham, 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 wham. Finally, after the 30th punch to the sternum, Naruto threw Niji high up in the air and everyone saw the nearly broken body of his enemy. As he was coming down, Naruto's body was surrounded by a mysterious red aura as he, with great speed, flew up in the air and kneed Niji in his jaw, or what Shao Kahn called the uplifting knee strike during their training together. Niji sailed a long distance across the arena before crash landing on the ground, causing him to cough up copious amounts of blood. Page Booth, that was a rather brutal gen and you have their hokage dono. I must say his ruthless fighting ability rivals that of Gara. Commented the Kazakiage, after pausing to find the suitable word for what he just witnessed. Since when the hell was the Kyubi child this powerful? I just might have to dispose of him before he becomes a thorn in my side thought Orochimaru, while seeing the brutality the Kyubi Jinchiriki unleashed on the Hyuga boy. Ah uh, yeah well, he's not usually like that at all. Said a dumbfounded Saratobi. I feared as much. Something has happened in the last month. Did Jiraiya train him? Or was it something I did to the Yandame seal? Thought Orochimaru while watching the one-sided fight unfold. Why has Naruto-kun changed so much? And what was that chakra technique? Normal chakra is blue, and that couldn't have been Kyubi's chakra, even if it was red. He should even have access to it despite Kakashi's report about wave country. And I sure as hell know that that was no medical chakra. What has happened to you this past month my boy? Thought the sand aim while seeing Naruto running Niji over with his power. Stance, Larg. Choji, after witnessing one of the most gruesome displays of brutality he has ever seen. Chikamaru simply stood there with wide eyes and a gapping mouth. No one could really tell if Shino was disturbed or not, however if you looked real close, you could see sweat dripping down his forehead. The rest of the genin, except Hinata who was still unconscious, were stunned into total silence. My god. Asuma's words pretty much wrapped up what all of the Jounin and Chunin were thinking. Well, except for one, I think I'm in love. Yelled an extremely aroused Anko with hearts in her eyes as she gazed upon Naruto and all of the blood he had spilled. That was one of the most sadistic and bloody things Anko had seen in a long time. And Anko absolutely loved bloody and sadistic things. Right now, Anko's list of men she had an eye on in Kanoha had been narrowed down to one person, and he was currently at the top of the list while competing in the arena below. And then Niji and Niki. Mumbled a frightened, teary-eyed Hanabi. She had just seen someone she viewed as an older brother beaten to a bloody pulp. And the fact she's only 10 years old means someone's traumatized for life. No. Whispered Hiashi as he watched his brother's son, his nephew, try to stand up while still coughing up blood. Arena floor, holy shit. Thought Genma, trying to decide whether or not to stop the match right now before Naruto flat out killed Niji. 
He couldn't, however, as the Hai Uga was still conscious and had finally stood up. You should quit now, Hai Uga. Before your injuries worsen. Stated Naruto as he looked at Niji's broken but still determined form standing 20 feet away from him and could see the boy was trying not to wobble. And then no ch chance and h hell dead last. I'm not going t to just qq quit because of cough cough of a few shattered ribs. It is m i f f fate to win this f fight. Niji weakly as he was coughing up blood and he slid into a juken stance. This gained him some respect in the eyes of many people, including Naruto, though it was a small increase. While I commend you on your resolve, which I do not give lightly, I have things to do and a certain Achiha to demolish. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to end this right now. Said the Uzumaki as he flipped through a few hand seals. Hand signs a majority of the Kanoha Shinobi population recognized. High release. Grand fireball technique. Naruto said as he blew out a beach ball sized fireball towards Niji. There came cries of panic from several members of the crowd as they the fireball get closer and closer to Niji's still form. They were calmed however as Niji finally started moving. A trigram's palm rotation. Cried out Niji as he spun in a circle and a large dome of chakra sprouted around him, deflecting the fireball at the last second and sending it towards the sky where it dissipated the farther it got. Many of the members of the crowd were shocked to see that Niji still had enough energy left to pull off Jutsu. The ones who were mainly surprised were the members of the Hyuga clan. How often do you witness a member of the cadet branch pull of a main branch technique? So yes, they were very surprised, none more so than Hiashi. Niji, you have come along so far without help from anyone, especially me. What kind of uncle am I when I can't even help out my own nephew? Thought the Hyuga patriarch sadly as he looked at the only child of his deceased brother. Impressive Niji. You truly are indeed a prodigy worthy of mentioning in regards to the Hyuga clan. However, like I stated earlier, I have to finish this quick so that I can reserve my energy and fight someone else a lot stronger than you. Applauded Naruto with nothing but honesty in his voice, shocking many within the crowd and wondered who it was that had more strength than Niji. As he finished saying this, the familiar yet still foreign red energy surrounded Naruto's body as he rushed towards Niji and shoulder rammed him. This knocked the Hayuga down to the ground and knocked him unconscious. Winner of the first match. Yuzumaki Naruto. Genma yelled while still finding it hard to believe this kid walking away from the fight was Yuzumaki Naruto. The crowd was dead silent. Deathly silent. They were stunned. Shocked in disbelief. As the medic nin came out to retrieve Niji, they were shocked as they saw Naruto pick him up and carried him over to the stretcher where the medics then took him towards the medical room. This act of selflessness snapped the crowd out of their stupor as he slowly received a very reluctant applause from those born in Kanoha, those that hated him of course, before it burst into a thunderous roar of clapping and finally the cheering from the people in the stadium overall. He actually won, Ino gasped. Sakura was completely silent as she was trying to decipher the fact that the dead last had just beaten last year's rookie of the year and advancing to the next round. It was simply impossible in her mind that this happened. It shouldn't have happened. That did not just happen. There's no way Naruto is this strong. It has to be a Jinjutsu. Yeah that's it a Jinjutsu made by the dumb Baka. Thought Sakura while seeing this new and most definitely improved Naruto walk to the fighter's box. Hiba smirked. He was really glad that Naruto beat Niji. Now he didn't fell as humiliated that he had lost to Naruto before. Weird huh? As for Hinata. She was still in her own perverted world of unconsciousness. What do you think? Kotetsu asked his companion. I think that Niji at least deserves a promotion for being able to stand and fight taking such a brutal beating. As for Naruto, we might as well just hand him his Junin vest now. Izumo answered. Junin. Ha. This kid just fucking dominated a fight against a prodigy from Kanoha's strongest clan, add that to the fact that he graduated as the dead last and has only been a genin for a year. Shit, they might as well give this kid his Jounin vest right now. Said Asuma, who was listening in on their conversation and knew this kid was Wayu beyond the rank of Junin. The two nodded to each other they had to admit that even though Naruto had only done a few things that they were all in fact rather impressive. They decided then that Naruto would be one of the ones who would be promoted to Chunin. Now they couldn't wait to see what this kid could do during the Jounin exam, now that was something that they were really looking forward to. But the Hayugas, Hanabi was practically shedding tears of joy now that Araniki wasn't going to die or be beat senseless anymore. The Hayuga council was thinking something along lines of trying to get Naruto married into the clan so that they could obtain that powerful green aura and were trying to think of a way to marry him off to Hinata, Hanabi, or another Hayuga main branch female. The Ashi however, knew what they were thinking and he didn't like it. He didn't like that fact that they were trying to control his clan by marrying off his daughters of all things. The very thought made his stomach churn. Right now he was hoping that he could find a way to get rid of those old farts so he could finally control the clan the way he wanted it. That meant no caged bird seal. 
so he could finally get close to his only nephew. Naruto walked up to the fighter's box and was instantly beseeched by the others looking at him in awe, fear, and in Tamari's case lust. Naruto, how the hell did you get so strong? Shikamaru asked. The answer to that Shikamaru is none of your mythurficant business. Naruto yelled before laughing as they all fell down out of surprise from the outburst after they leaned forward to hear him and saw them sweat drop. Troublesome blonde. Muttered Shikamaru as he got up off the floor and rubbed his forehead. That hit, I wouldn't be me if I wasn't troublesome Shikamaru. Chuckled Naruto while the next match was about to begin. It was time for Ichiha Sasuke and Sabaku no Gara to fight. Problem was Ichiha Sasuke was still nowhere to be seen or found. I guess I have no choice but to disqualify Sasuke for not showing up, said the Hokage, while looking over where Naruto was standing, and his appearance was making the old cage nervous. Okage-sama, perhaps you should wait and postpone the match until later. The people did come to see the boy and my son compete in this expected battle of the titans that are our best genin of our respected shinobi villages, said the Kazakiage with a sand aim narrowing his eyes at him before giving it some thought. Very well. It would be in the spirit of competition these two would face off and to help further our good relations, I'm willing to postpone the match, said the sand aim before he gave the order, while Naruto and Gara frowned in displeasure when hearing Genma make the announcement. If I had been one second late, they would have called for my instant disqualification and a whole bunch of other sanctions against me, said Naruto more to himself than anyone else. Why you? Said Tamari with Naruto looking at her now and it was making all kinds of emotions run through her body. Because I am a Jinchuriki. Just like him, said Naruto pointing at Gara. Which one? Said Gara before Tamari could speak. I will be, said Naruto simply with Gara's eyes widening and no doubt Shukaku was in his head telling him to stay the hell away from him. I see now. That explains the whispers I've heard the people make about you and why they were hoping you'd lose at the Hayuga's hands, said Tamari seeing Naruto let out a chuckle. I'm not surprised. Unlike your brother, the Leaf Village didn't want a weapon with the power to fight them if they wanted to vent their anger and had no problem making my life miserable from day one, said Naruto, while Genma called for Kankuro and Shino to come down to fight. I forfeit. Said Kankuro knowing that a risk fighting Shino now would cause the plan for the invasion to go up in smoke. Will Sabaku no Tamari and Nara Shikamaru please come down to the arena floor. Your match starts now, said Genma with Tamari heading down quickly and waiting for her opponent to appear. Troublesome. First Naruto's change in appearance and now this. I'm going to forfeit, said Shikamaru before he was lifted from his position and thrown out of the fighter's box to the arena floor below. Crash. You can thank me later, said Naruto with Shikamaru grumbling while picking himself off the ground. Damn blonde. Damn troublesome blonde-haired people. First Eno being my teammate, then Naruto doing this, and now the one from Suna is my opponent in the exams. I swear Kami loves blonde-haired people over me, said Shikamaru while getting off the ground and saw Tamari was ready for a fight. Just for that, I'm going to beat the laziness right out of you, and then I'm going to ask Naruto-kun out on a date, said Tamari with several girls unleashing killer intent at her. Oh she did not just say that. Thought several people glaring at the blonde Kinoichi from Suna. Fight. Said Genma with Tamari moving quickly to finish this in at least one move. Oh holy crap. Said Shikamaru as he underestimated Tamari's speed and barely dodged the hit from her iron fan. Stand your ground and fight coward. Said Tamari as she kept using her iron fan like a blunt object and Shikamaru was running away while having flashback of seeing his father doing the same thing when mom was in one of her moods. So this is what he goes through all the time. I have a newly found level of respect for you dad thought Shikamaru before he tripped on a rock and looked back to see Tamari leap in the air with her iron fan coming down on him. Take this. Yelled Tamari with Shikamaru seeing his life flash before his eyes. With my last breath I just want to say troublesome, said Shikamaru seeing the blunt object get closer to his skull. Smash. Winner. Sabaku no Tamari. Said Genma, who winced at seeing Shikamaru twitching from taking the blow to the skull and was surprised the girl's weapon didn't have an imprint of the Nara's face on it. And yet the boy was somehow alive. Unconscious, but still alive. Flawless victory. Said Naruto with a grin on his face. No shit. Um will Sabaku no Gara and Ichiha Sasu come down to the field. It's time for your match to begin, said Genma, while Shikamaru was carted away while Tamari went up to the fighter's box. So about that date, said Tamari Sly with her finger moving around the muscles of the Yuzumaki's chest and let out an eep. When he suddenly grabbed her rear before pulling her towards him. If I say yes just what do I get in return? Said Naruto while seeing her blushing red in the face, seeing Tamari squirming a bit while his hand stayed firmly on the Kinoichi's rear and it increased when her crotch rubbed up against his own. I I will I think of something. Said Tamari in a slightly squeaky voice while Naruto just grinned further like a madman. I'll hold you to that Tamari-chan, said Naruto before he let her go as the now flustered and aroused woman tried to focus on the arena. 
Not what he could do with that weapon hidden away in his pants. Meanwhile, the match below was like history repeating itself once again, as Gara had appeared on the arena floor, and Ichiha Sasu could not. This did not sit well with the future clients and daimyos watching things unfold from their position in the stands. Some people were booing the Ichiha for not showing, while many Kanoha-born people grew concerned something might have happened to the boy and others suspecting Naruto had a hand in it. Not that Naruto cared since he would kill the Ichiha in these exams and stick it to Kanoha in the worst way possible, with no way for them to get back at him. Not legally anyway. Ichiha Sasuke is not here and therefore disqualified. The winner of the match is Abaku no Gara. Will Aburam Shino and Yuzumaki Naruto come down to the arena floor said Genma, after waiting long enough for Sasuke to get here for his match. Looks like we're up Shino, said Naruto with the Aburam having a pensive look on his face. I forfeit, said Shino knowing it was only logical for him to do that right now. His insects didn't stand a chance against Naruto's power and that was what everyone had seen so far. Who knows what else the Yuzumaki had up his sleeve. Smart man, said Naruto before seeing Tamari looking at her brother waiting for a match. I'm going to forfeit too. My brother is not squeamish should he decide to kill a member of his family, said Tamari with Naruto nodding in understand. Oh that's just great. Fine. Will Sabaku no Gara and Yuzumaki Naruto come down here to face each other, said Genma with a sigh and hope no one else forfeit. Showtime said Naruto before he jumped out of the fighter's box and landed loudly on the ground to cause a crater in the process and shook the stadium. You will prove my existence and die regardless of your power, said Gara, who was now grinning and finding his blood rushing through him faster than it had in a long time. Of course, the fight between them was interrupted when Ichiha Sasuke finally arrived and with Hada Kakashi right behind in a swirl of leaves. Though compared to Naruto's entrance, they looked kind of bland and boring in a sense where no one really went wow. At the sight of them. Are we late? said Kakashi with a you smile on the unmasked part of his face, and Genma just sighed at the man. Not only are you late, but Sasuke's match was postponed, and when you didn't show up with him for his second chance I had to disqualify the Achiha, said Genma seeing both Sasuke and Kakashi were shocked by this. Well Kakashi was shocked, but Sasuke was pissed off, and the Achiha looked ready to kill someone. Well at least that loser of mine for a teammate didn't advance in his match against Niji. I bet the Hayuga hurt that pathetic excuse of a shinobi no badly that he cried and pissed himself, said Sasuke letting out a cruel chuckle. Only to be surpassed by a cruel after coming from a helmeted figure and the burning crimson eyes made the hairs on the back of Kakashi's head stand up. You would be losing that bed Ichiha. Niji fell in battle by my hands painfully I might add, said Naruto with Sasuke looking at him with disbelief. Naruto. Said Kakashi while Naruto just grinned further with his fangs showing. Impossible. You are not that dead last loser, said Sasuke seeing what Naruto now was and felt should be rightfully his own power. If you're so confident, then back it up and take me down yourself Sasuke, said Naruto with the Ichiha charging forward blindly and hitting him with a punch to the stomach, only to cry out in pain. H-H-H-H-H. Yelled Sasuke as he held his now broken right hand and hearing Naruto laughing at him. Foolish Ichiha. Your strength, what little there was of it in your possession has failed and are no longer even remotely close to my league, said Naruto with his arms crossed in front of him. Shut up. I don't care what kind of power you possess. I will always be better than you loser. This village will always love me over your worthless self any day of the week. My finger has more value than your whole body. Said Sasuke while Naruto just smirked at him. Is that so? Said Naruto his grin reaching from one ear to the next. 100% said Sasuke while Kakashi was still looking in disbelief at what had become of Naruto. Then let's test your little theory. Said Naruto before his body glowed red for a second and a shoulder strike at the Achiha that sent the boy through the stadium wall. Sasuke. Said Kakashi before glaring at Naruto. Looks like you were wrong about me being a weak and pathetic haddock. What was it you said? You didn't want to risk your reputation on teaching a no-talented person like myself. That I would lose to Hayuga Niji and therefore not worth your time. I am in the last match of the Chunin exam finals. I crushed my enemy without your help my so-called sensei, and after today I won't need any of your so-called training after this tournament is over, said Naruto, letting out a cruel laughter that echoed throughout the stadium. What do you mean by that? You are a genin unless promoted by the Hokage himself to Chunin, said Kakashi, while Naruto just grinned while looking back at the sanding. Him? He may portray himself to be a dragon with his title, but that man is really just a toothless worm said Naruto seeing Kakashi looking at him in shock and everyone else hearing that. How dare you disrespect the Sandame? Said Kakashi before an explosion was heard in the cage's booth and around the village. I'm going to do more than disrespect the old man on a verbal level haddock. I'm going to show my power to these weak fools in Kanoha, and when I do the village will fear me, now not the other way around. 
said Naruto with Gara trying to go along with his part of the plan to awaken Shukaku through the Jinjutsu, a certain bespectacled subordinate of Orochimaru was unleashing on the stadium. Gara hurry. Said Tamari with Kankuro and Baki appearing to cover his flank. Now see what this no-talented shinobi you didn't want to tarnish your reputation can do haddock. Said Naruto before forming a light spear and throwing it at Gara with the red projectile piercing the sand into the red-haired boy's shoulder. Gara cried Tamari seeing his sand fall apart and her youngest brother bleeding from the energy weapon's point of entry. My blood. I'm bleeding. Yelled Gara frantically having seen the crimson liquid coming out of his body with his own two eyes. He's mine. Said Kankuro bringing out his puppets, but no sooner had they been let out, were they destroyed violently by the immense strength Naruto unleashed on them, and finally punching Suna's puppet master prodigy in the face to send him flying. We need to get Gara out of here said Baki turning to Tamari, who nodded at him and tried to move her little brother clutching his bleeding shoulder. So noble. I wonder if you are giving that order because you care about him as a person or if you care about him as your weapon. Said Naruto grabbing Baki by the throat and lifting him up off the ground. What does it matter to you? You are a Jinchuriki too. Suna knew about you before this happened. Why do you think the Kazakiage agreed to strike out against Konoha? He knew you were weak. That Kanoha was foolish in their efforts to keep you under their thumb by making a weak weapon out of their Jinchuriki, said Baki, while Naruto narrowed his eyes at him. Their Kazakiage was right about one thing. Kanoha was foolish in their efforts to keep me under their thumb. Of that much, you are indeed correct Suna Jounin, but make no mistake about it when I tell you I am far from weak and this world will soon know that fact. Said Naruto before crushing the man's windpipe and threw him away like he was nothing. Looking at the cage's booth, Naruto saw there was a fight going on between the Hokage and Orochimaru, using his impersonation of the Kazakiage to get close to the old man. In the stands, Suna and Sound Shinobi were fighting the leaf forces there that wouldn't fall under the sleep-inducing Jinjutsu. Grinning at this golden opportunity, Naruto decided to let Tamari escape with Gara and a severely conquest Kankuro while unleashing his fury on the people in the stands. This is the best Chunin exams ever said Enko, as she killed two Suna shinobi with her snakes and one sound shinobi when her kunai pierced his skull. Enko. Chided Kurinai while shaking her head at the special Jounin's love for violence and wondered if anyone had the power to tame the crazy woman. What? This is what it's all about Kurachan. The fighting, the killing and surviving to see another day, said Anko simply with Kurinai looking to say something else, but a mighty battle roar was heard above them, and upon looking up, saw Yuzumaki Naruto descending down on their location with his wrath hammer with a dragon symbol on the side in his hands. What the hell? Said Kurinai before she and Anko leaped out of the way before Naruto landed, causing a great deal of damage to the stands upon impact. You asshole. You almost killed us. Said Anko with a pissed off look on her face. But I didn't, did I? said Naruto before swinging his wrath hammer at a Suna shinobi, followed by a sound shinobi, two more of them, and then three more from Suna fell from get hit by his weapon. That's not the point. Said Anko before she kicked one Suna shinobi between the legs and moved to kick Naruto's ass. Until she saw the pile of bodies and splatters of blood that surrounded him. No. The point is that you saw me heading your way, you dodged, you survived, and look sexy killing these weak fools, said Naruto before he performed charging spikes and had caused the group of shinobi that were hit become shredded from his jagged armor plating on his body. He's a violent asshole who is causing bodily harm to anyone caught in his crosshairs and no one is safe from him, said Anko simply while Kurinai and herself saw him put his fist through an enemy shinobi's chest. And? Said Kurinai while seeing Naruto kick another man in the stomach with enough force to send the poor bastard through three walls and have a piece of it fall on his head to cause the killing blow. And I want him so badly right now. Whined Anko while Kurinai sweat dropped. Later Anko. We have to defend Kanoha right now, said Kurinai with Anko pouting at first, but soon got into it and began to defend the village from its enemies. Out of my way said Naruto, as he was smacking around everyone and anyone that was getting in his path to the cage booth, currently being surrounded by a purple barrier on the tiled building. Look at him go. Said Asuma before taking down two Suna shinobi with his two trench knives. Yosh. Naruto-san is really showing off his springtime of youth. Said Guy while spin kicking a sound shinobi into a nearby wall. That's not the only thing he's showing off, said Tenten, as she saw his wrath hammer and his skill with it. Making his way to the cage's booth, Naruto saw the barrier was standing in his way and created by those four individuals at each corner. Each one hand picked by Orochimaru to be his bodyguards and loyal to the end of their days depending on their conditioning of their training by him. What are you doing here? Said a leaf anbu captain with his team trying to get figure out a way to get through the barrier. Doing your job you pathetic weakling, said Naruto while seeing the old man was taking on the two previous hokages while the sanin watched with amusement. Until Naruto came into view. You. Said Orochimaru while seeing the weapon of choice in his hands. 
You were expecting one of the Elder Gods. Said Naruto before swinging his wrath hammer into the barrier and make the wall he hit shatter on contact. That's not possible. Said Orochimaru, as Naruto walked through the massive hole, and TH Anbu doing the same to assist their Hokage in battle. I am Yuzumaki Naruto and I specialize in doing the impossible, said Naruto before he created a light spear and throwing it at the Shadame Hokage with a literal energy weapon, pierced the man's skull before turning the man into ash due to the tag in his head being destroyed. What did you do? Said Orochimaru, as he never considered his puppets would have their strings cut in such a simple way. Her supposed genius you really are dumb, said Naruto before he repeated the process with the Sandame Hokage's second predecessor to the title. Thank you Naruto. I ah. Uh, cried the Sandame, as he was punched hard in the face by the very person who just saved his life and was shocked like everyone else by this. You and I are going to have a long talk about your actions regarding me old man. Make no mistake about it. Said Naruto with his eyes burning with fury before turning his full attention to Orochimaru. Retreat. Said Orochimaru before he began to flee with his bodyguards. Howard. Said Naruto as he threw his wrath hammer at the Sanin and struck through in the back to cause him to drop like a stone onto the ground. Orochimaru-sama. Said one of the sound four with extra limbs that reminded Naruto of the Shokin, though it was clear the man wasn't one of their kin in any shape or form. The sound four tried to intercept Naruto, but they were attacked by the senseis of the rookie nine and Guy, while the young warrior descendant of Shao Kahn landed in front of the downed Sanin. The impact of the wrath hammer nearly breaking his spine while shattering the bones in his shoulders and to stop any movement in his arms altogether. He couldn't move much with the damage inflicted while taking considerable effort to get onto his knees, but Naruto was not one for taking chances with the Sanin and walked slowly towards the man with caution, should he try something. And try he did. The man's face shot up and shot out a long blade from a sword from his mouth. Intent on killing this genin ranked nothing that had ruined everything for him and ruining years of planning his revenge. All the scheming, the preparations and hard work were destroyed in a single day by this Yuzumaki brat standing before him. However, the boy was expecting something and moved faster than the Sanin thought possible before feeling a nearly skull-crushing pressure from hand now on his face. Your soul is mine. Said Naruto having been taught the deadly art by Shao Kahn before ripping the man's soul from his body and into his own, with the Sanin screaming out in agonizing pain in the process. Those watching this event unfold, Konoha, Suna, and Sound Shinobi, could only look on in horror at the sight of Orochimaru's soul, which many questioned if he even had one in the first place, leave his body to enter Naruto's own. The body of the Sanin fell down dead, his bodyguards now screaming in pain from the curse seals burning away at their master's death, and even Anko herself was feeling the failed mark of her former teacher burning away. Seeing the Kusanagi sword amongst the now quickly decaying body of Orochimaru, the Yuzumaki picked it up and examined the blade, while finding it would be a useful addition to his arsenal. Orochimaru my old student, said the Sande mournfully while in disbelief at seeing Orochimaru's body falling apart and Naruto standing over it. Pathetic, said Naruto seeing the Sandame focus on him now with a slight scowl. Show your respect for the dead Naruto. You could at least do that. Said the Sandame while Naruto just laughed at him. Me? Show respect to the likes of him. Like you showed respect for my father's dying wish. Said Naruto seeing the Sandame flinch at him. How did you know? How did you find out? Said the Sandame while Naruto scowled and narrowed his eyes at the old cage. It doesn't matter how I know. What matters is that everyone this village pays for their actions against me. Starting with you. Said Naruto before he was in the Sandame's now surprised face and punched the man in the stomach to make the Hokage fall to his knees before throwing up. And Naruto. Stop I beg beg of you. Said the Sandame before he was lifted up his neck, the feeling of the punch rivaled Tsunade, and his fight with his former student along with the previous two Hokages had sapped his strength dry. This village's pathetic arrogance and their ignorance no longer shackles me. All these years, you along with the rest of them, have fought to keep me under your control and deny what is rightfully mine. Not this time old fool, said Naruto, as he punched the Sandame in the face, then backhanded him and threw the cage into the stadium wall with enough force to create a spiderweb cracks. I had no choice. It needed to be done. It was for the good of the village. The world needed to be protected from the child of prophecy. It's the reason why the elder god Raiden came and informed me of what needed to be done, said the Sandame trying to get up, but was kneed in the chest and then grabbed by the back of his battle uniform before being spun around into the wall, again only going through the damaged part of the stadium. A pathetic effort from an incompetent deity to bind what cannot be bound to his rules, said Naruto simply before summoning his wrath hammer. Please stop Naruto. Show mercy. Said the Sandame crawling away from the boy he had wronged. Like the village showed me. Said Naruto before he was surrounded on all sides by Anbu and a man he had never seen before with long white hair standing protectively over the Sandame. Stop Naruto. 
this is getting out of hand, said the figure with Naruto looking less than impressed and pleased by the interruption. And who are you to command me? Said Naruto with rage growing in his eyes. I'm Jiraiya the Toad Sanin and I'm your godfather, said Jiraiya, with Naruto's eyes widening before they narrowed, and the rage in them increased exponentially. I see. So it wasn't enough the old man denies me my heritage, but you abandon me to a life of torment in this village, and only now come back here to save him. Said Naruto pointing to the still down Hokage. What are you talking about? The Sandane told me you were loved in the village. That you were being trained to the best of your abilities each time I visited to report what I learned from my spy network, said Jiraiya before looking back at the ashamed face of the Hokage. It seems you were being deceived as well by the old man. Whatever he told you was a complete lie. Said Naruto with a hollow tone of amusement in his voice. Sensei, what is going on? You told me he was loved here in Konoha. You told me the Yandame's dying wish was being honored. That Naruto was being properly protected from his father's enemies. Said Jiraiya with the Sandame looking away from his second of three students, while Naruto laughed. Loved. Protected. I have received none of those things from this village, except from a few people, and on fewer occasions. No doubt thanks to him. Said Naruto pointing at the Sandame with his wrath hammer. Still, I can't let you kill him Naruto. The invasion is over. I took down Sabaku no Gara, and his siblings are currently being detained for the moment, said Jiraiya, having done his own bit of fighting during the invasion. Meanwhile, Naruto looking less than pleased by the Sanin's words, and looked down at the severely injured cage the sage was standing over. Now was not the time to deal with either of them, as he had other matters to attend to, and the enemy at the walls was one of them. We will settle this another time old man. Consider this small beating a mere prelude to the fury I will unleash on you at a later time. For now, I have some pests to remove from my village. Said Naruto before he left to fight the now fleeing allied forces. Sensei, you have some serious explaining to do, and unless I get the whole truth from your mouth, I'm going to let him finish you off, said Jiraiya, while holding back his own fury at the old man. The Sandame sighed, his age catching up to him now, and felt things were only going to get worse from here on out. Chapter 3 Blood Splatter Hino has spent the next week recovering from the attack by the allied forces, led by the now dead Orochimaru of the Sanin, who killed the Kazakiage to impersonate him and trick the alley of Kanoha to attack. Now things were trying to get figured out, negations being made with Sabaku no Kankuro doing them, while Jiraiya spent his time with Gara and fixing his seal, so the boy would be more stable and finally be able to sleep. There were those in Kanoha who opposed the new alliance treaty between the two villages, as they felt reparations should be made by Suna and at a hefty price. Jiraiya, who had been acting as temporary Gondame Hokage due to the Sandame's injuries and the seemingly declining health of his sensei, helped keep the peace. Kankuro had told Jiraiya why Suna did what they did, as the wind daimyo was bleeding them dry and would not change his mind in his action for giving missions to Kanoha over Suna. Aurochimaru had spoken with honey-filled words into the Kazakiage's ear about making Suna great once again and using Gara in the process would make the village grand like it had been in the past. Jiraiya could understand. He also had been digging through the Sandame's papers, seeing the Kazakiage had asked the Hokage to intervene on his behalf to stop the wind daimyo from killing his village. However, the Sandame had apparently ignored the pleas of the Kazakiage by ignoring the message and not sending any message to the feudal Lord of Wind. Jiraiya realized that his sensei saw Suna getting stronger with Gara being their Jinchuriki, who was getting stronger with each passing year in using the One Tail's power, while Naruto couldn't tap into his at all due to their seals being completely different and the Hokage had taken the route of weakening Suna to compensate for this. That one side needed the other to live, but Orochimaru had offered to provide support to Suna and tip the balance of power in the Kazakiage's favor. Everything else the Kazakiage did was to make sure that things stayed in Suna's favor long afterwards, despite how the method it was achieved. Though Naruto had thrown a monkey wrench into the whole plan upon his arrival into the Chunin exam finals and killed Orochimaru. After the Kazakiage's siblings were detained, Naruto actually paid them a visit before the Toad San and talked to any of them, though Jiraiya didn't know what they talked about since the guards watching them were on the ground with broken bones in various places and too much in pain to pay attention. Regardless of whatever they talked about, it had Kankuro moving to begin negotiations right away and Tamari with a blush on her face after Naruto left with a smirk on his face. See you in a few years Tamari-chan. I'm looking forward to our eventual date and that's something. Those were the only words spoken by him to the eldest of the Suna siblings, while leaving them to talk amongst themselves. Speaking of Naruto, the Toad Sanin had been less than pleased with how the boy was treated in Konoha after learning of it by his own snooping around and the records he procured to prove the abuse was in fact true. It made the Sanin's blood boil and cursed his sensei for bowing to the whims of the councils, along with this elder god Raiden. Jiraiya didn't understand the whole story, but it further proved to him the child of prophecy was more than likely Naruto, and the boy was setting out to destroy the shinobi way rather than to save it. 
Had Jiraiya been able to raise the child like he hoped, the Sanin would have tried to steer the boy into saving it from destruction and bring about everlasting peace. Sadly, the old adage of there can be no peace without war sprung up in his mind, and that was what seemed to be in Naruto's mind too. The way the boy now looked, walked, and fought was that of a warlord seeking to carve his name into the world. To forge an empire and build over the bodies of his very dead enemies. What happened to you Naruto? Said Jiraiya to himself while wondering how he could make this right for his godson. Jiraiya himself couldn't be permanent hokage due to his responsibilities to his godson, not to mention his spy network required he move around and meet up with his contacts. He dare not give the Sandane back the position of Hokage, as his sensei didn't have the strength for it anymore, and it proved to be true when visiting the man in the hospital. The once great Kami of Shinobi looked old, his face showed as much, and the man's eyes looked tired from doing this line of work the job entailed. And Jiraiya could only pity him. The Sandame had confessed everything to him. About his actions against Naruto. About the elder god Raiden visiting, informing the Hokage of the boy potential, and the threat he was to the world if reached. The fact Naruto was the Jinchuriki of Kaiubi made it all the more imperative that the last Uzumaki and possibly the known world was to be kept on a tightly collared leash they could yank hard when required. The lives in Konoha and the entire world were at stake with this child of prophecy holding so much power inside of him. The boy's life does not outweigh the villages and the world's Jiraiya. Sooner or later you will come to realize that. That was what the Sandame said to him at the hospital. Jiraiya called him and this elder god foolish in return, since they had caused the situation with Naruto resenting Konoha to happen. That the boy chose to fight against the leaf with his power, then to fight for it when given the choice laid out before him, and the only reason Naruto was still in Konoha was to make the village the heart of something greater. For what exactly, Jiraiya didn't know or fathom at this point, thanks to a certain retired again Hokage keeping the Sanin away from Naruto. It would have been more merciful to let Orochimaru kill their former sensei at this point, and Jiraiya was sure Hiruzen would agree with him. But Naruto. Naruto wasn't surprised when he went to his apartment building to find it destroyed and even less surprised when seeing it was done at the hands of the people of Konoha, instead of it very enemies that invaded not that long ago. The crowd of civilians and some of the shinobi of Konoha were all cheering at destroying the demon's lair, with him now being homeless like some of them were. Many expected the boy to weep, cry, and wallow in despair at the loss of his home, with the only choice left for Naruto was to sleep in the alleyways. To beg someone to let him stay the night and even if they did it would come at a price that would make hotels seem cheap by comparison. However, this was not the Uzumaki Naruto they knew him to be due to their memories lacking short term, and even if he was the name Naruto they supposedly knew he would rather sleep in the alleyway than sleep one day in their houses for a hefty financial fee he would most likely couldn't afford. So when Naruto made his presence known, they all smirked and taunted him about the loss of his home. He responded back by leaving those responsible either dead or so severely injured that they would wish death had claimed them. Some shinobi arrived on the scene, demanding he surrender for the attack on the people and shinobi lying on the ground around them. Naruto just made a come get me hand motion with the squad in front of him being hesitant to engage in battle and it made the son of the Yandame laugh at their cowardice before leaving them to collect those still barely alive. So where was he now? Well, yes. Yes. Fuck me. Fuck me Naruto-kun. Yelled Anko, as she was in her own place of residence and getting plowed from behind by the Uzumaki. Yes. That's right. Naruto was fucking Midarashi Anko. How did this happen? Well after Naruto killed Orochimaru, the curse seals on all his victims, which included one Ichiha Sasuke despite his desire for it to stay, the special Jounin had been so happy at finally being freed from Orochimaru's control, and all thanks to Naruto. If that wasn't enough, Anko practically creamed her panties when learning how the Sanin died when Naruto ripped out his soul and devoured it into his body. After Naruto lost his place to live in thanks to the ingrates of Konoha he had saved, only to maim them for their stupid actions against him, Anko offered the future emperor a place to crash and with no financial fee to it attached. Thus the sexual kind and Naruto paid her well in that regard. His time and outworld had allowed the young shinobi turned future warlord of Earthrealm to enjoy the pleasures of the flesh from the slave girls and female servants in Shao Kahn's palace. His merger with Kaiubi had brought out all sorts of urges, memories of times before being sealed away ages ago, where the fox would take a human form to rut with a woman and knew which spots to hit for a woman to scream out in pleasure. He had made many beautiful women in outworld yearn for his touch from his many nights with them. That's it Anko-chan. Moan out for me. Cry out for more. Tell me how much you wanted. Said Naruto, as he thrust harder and faster, with the special Jounin's eyes rolling back into her head. I'm cooming. I'm fucking cooming. Screamed Anko, as she cried out and came hard while Naruto did the same before the collapsed on the barely holding bed. Several days of doing this for hours on end each time will do that. At this rate you're going to need a new bed, said Naruto, while Anko moaned with the sound coming from her throat saying she agreed. 
Well worth it, said Anko while breathing heavily while looking back at him before she rolled over to be on top of him. Agreed, said Naruto while she rested her sweaty body against his own. There is another reason behind our agreement to stay here, said Anko while she saw Naruto look at her with a raised eyebrow. Really? Said Naruto seeing Anko nod with her face looking surprisingly calm and a hint of seriousness. It's just I have hated Orochimaru my whole life. Ever since I was dropped like a sack of shit on Kanoha's doorsteps by him, with no solid memories of how it happened. I tried to prove I was loyal to the leaf. That I wasn't him. That I wasn't some kind of sleeper agent intent on destroying the village like he wanted to since the event that caused him to flee. I hear the name Snake Slut, Snake Whore, Traitor Student, and so many other things that there were times I thought about running away, said Anko, while feeling his strong, yet surprisingly gentle touch across her sweaty back, and moaned at the touch. Why didn't you run away? Said Naruto curiously while Anko kissed his muscled upper torso. Where could I go? I had nothing but the clothes on my back, and so strapped for cash the only way to get it to escape would be to whore myself out to anyone willing to pay. I was too young for that anyway, and I wasn't going to start making their names for me become true. Yeah I'm bloodthirsty, violent, and sadistic in my job. So what? I'm a shinobi. It's in the job description and one of the specific profession within the job itself requires I be cruel to my enemies, said Anko while kissing his body more aggressively. That doesn't explain your other reason for this arrangement of yours, said Naruto with a chuckle and Anko grinned sheepishly. Sorry. The other reason I mentioned is because is because I want to express my thanks for killing Orochimaru. I had wished for him to die an agonizing death for what he did to me, said Anko, while seeing him smirk at her. Well there is nothing more painful than having your soul ripped out, said Naruto seeing Anko grinning seductively at him while sitting up completely while straddling his hips. I believe you. I swore to myself that I would be the fuck toy, slut, concubine, whatever you want to call me in all but name to the person capable of killing him and do whatever you ask of them. So I wish to state for the record that I am yours. Only yours. You can have me anywhere at any time. My body is your reward to you for killing Orochimaru, said Anko, as she began moving her hips and moaned loudly, knowing it would get him geared up for another round. You really want my rent, don't you Anko-chan? Said Naruto while groping both of her breasts and loved how the woman moaned under his touch. You've been so generous already. Is it too much to ask for a little bit more? Said Anko with an innocent look on her face that was hardly innocent. Not at all. Though you will be flush for some time, said Naruto with Anko now slowly riding him while moaning from it. I like the sound of that, said Anko grinning while she moved faster with Naruto still groping her breasts to further bring about pleasure. She could get used to this. Okage Tower sometime later, Naruto walked to the meeting room with a purpose in his step, as Jiraiya wanted to speak with him about what happened during the month prior to Adichunin exams and just what he had done during all the fighting. The only reason he agreed to this meeting with Jiraiya, as he was the acting temporary Hokage at the moment, and the councils along with the clan heads seeking answers to their questions too. What bothered him was the councils bitching, complaining, and basically being their usual selves in regards to his own life. They'll probably bitch just over what I did to Sasuke and demand I surrender my power over to the jerk. Not to mention Kakashi will want to say something about my actions, and I doubt being made a Chuanin is in the cards at this moment. Not that I care about that since I'm stronger than most of the shinobi in this village, thanks to Shao Kahn's training and the battles fought in his arena. Damn. Is it me or does Shiva look sexy in that one-piece bikini attire? Thought Naruto with a smirk on his face, but shook those things away and decided to focus on the task at hand with this meeting. Welcome to the meeting Naruto, said Jiraiya, while those on the council scowled or sneered with the clan heads looking at him with respect. Considering all that he's done recently Naruto felt it was about damn time. You ask me to come here for this meeting? Said Naruto with his arms crossed in front of him. Commanded. Said Danzo while stomping his cane once when emphasizing the word. I don't take orders from you old fool. Now why am I here? Said Naruto with Danzo now glaring at the boy for his disrespect. You are here because we simply wish to know what happened in the one month prior to the Chuanin exams. Said Jurei while sending a glance at Danzo and the councils to shut their mouths. If you must know I was with my forefather in the realm known as Outworld, which is ruled by the Emperor Shao Kahn, and he was teacher during my stay in his palace, said Naruto simply while the councils began yelling at him for lying about such nonsense. Silence. Naruto please continue, said Jiraiya, while Naruto smirked at them all. After the Chuanin exam prelims. Ended, I sought out Hata Kakashi at the hospital to train me in order to fight Niji in the finals, but the bastard thought I was without talent and would stain his reputation when I lost. If anything, his reputation was stained the very moment he began showing favoritism to the Achiha and training the prick without considering his other students, said Naruto with the councils again going up in arms about him and his badmouthing Sasuke for his actions. Despite it being true. 
that still doesn't explain your sudden growth, your new powers, and everything else you did during the invasion, said Hamura, while Naruto just laughed at him. I was getting there before I was interrupted. You say I don't have any manners, yet your own actions would be considered rude to others, and people would think of you the same way you do me. Not that it matters. As for what happened next, it's pretty straightforward, as we argued, I left Kakashi to pamper the Achiha, and was then ambushed by a bunch of Konoha shinobi, wanting to ensure I never made it to the Chunin exam finals. They even mentioned something about getting the Hyuga clan's favor before one struck me in the head, and I went unconscious, said Naruto, while many glanced at Hiyashi and wondered if anyone in the clan had influenced the attack. Heads are going to roll in my house if the elders decided to do anything thought Hiyashi, knowing his own inquiry would be needed to clear his clan of this whole mess. The next thing I knew, I found myself in Outworld recovering from my injuries, which from what I learned weren't healing from using Kyuubi's chakra, since Orochimaru cut off the tap when I fought him in the Forest of Death. After Shao Kahn told me where I was, he wanted to train me for the Chunin exams, and it was then I was told of our bloodline connection, said Naruto seeing many go pale, since they thought the boy they hated was nothing more than orphan trash from some no-named whore for a mother. Bloodline connection. Said Shikaku, who was paying attention now, and looked wide awake for once. Yes. It seems the Sage of Six Paths was in fact his son. Taken after his birth straight to Earthrealm by the Thunder God Raiden to be its protector from his base sire, should the Emperor wish to invade the realm. Meaning that I am the long line descendant of the Sage of Six Paths and Emperor Shao Kahn of Outworld, said Naruto seeing jaws drop and back go stiff in fear of him. And rightfully so when considering everything that has happened. So you're saying that you have royal blood in your veins? Said Hiashi with Naruto just nodding yes to the question. I will not believe such a claim is true. There is no way the Kaiubi Jinchuriki is of royal blood. He is trash. Said a member of the civilian council. I am the legacy of an emperor. Whether or not a weak fool like yourself believe it to be true doesn't concern me, said Naruto seeing the councilman seething with his face red with anger. Ureya, you should check the seal to ensure Kaiubi is not influencing him. His power is unnatural, said Kaharu, while Naruto laughed in a boisterous manner. Hiramur as you know him as Kaiubi is no longer sealed within me. We have merged together during my time in Outworld thanks to the Emperor's powers, explained Naruto making the councils yelling at Ureya to kill or subdue him for becoming the demon they all hated. He's a demon. Kill him kill him. Said a civilian council member while pointing at Naruto. Put him on trial for crimes against Konoha and the Achiha. Said another person. Enough. What is with you people and your lack of intelligence? The Sande may have bowed to your whims in keeping the boy's potential locked away, but I won't be your puppet and I'm damn going to make sure Naruto isn't either, said Jiraiya, while Naruto smirked more since he could kill these fools right now, but was holding back that idea for the moment since the time wasn't right and he had to be patient to get the things he needed. But Jiraiya-sama. This demonic abomination is a threat to all of Konoha. Our very way of lives are at stake. Said Hamura while the Sanin scowled at him and noticed Danzo was staring intently at Naruto with a calculating eye. My eye has no effect on him. Damn it. Thought Danzo while wondering how that was even possible given his harvested Sharingan eye behind his bandage had an influential ability over others. You mean he's a threat to all of you? Those here who have spit on the dying wish of the Yandame himself regarding the boy. His parents would kill you all slowly and painfully if they were alive today, upon learning of the abuse Naruto went through. Said Jiraiya, as he saw the council scoff at the mention of the Yandame, while the clan heads glared at them. Not to change the subject here, but I need to ask you this Jiraiya-san, what is to become of the position of Hokage? You are only temporary in regards to the position, said Shaibi, since Jiraiya was needed elsewhere and everywhere around the elemental countries. Simple. I'm going to find a proper replacement for the Sandame, since Sensei is clearly too old for the job, said Jiraiya seeing Danzo scowl at this. Who? Why not just name Danzo? He was the Sandame's rival after all, said someone on the civilian council's side. Back when they were both young. If the Sandame is too old to be Hokage, then so is the cripple, and that is that. Said Tsum, as she had no love for the Sandame regarding how the old man let the village hurt Naruto, and even less for Danzo with his warring ways without any regard for his subordinates. Am Inuzuka bitch. Thought Danzo making a mental note to cripple the Inuzuka clan when he eventually began Hokage in the near future. Who do you have in mind Jiraiya? Said Inoichi with Jiraiya smirking at him. My old teammate Senju Tsunade, said Jiraiya with the councils going nuts again until Naruto had enough and swung his wrath hammer down on the meeting room table to shut them up. The next one who speaks will know my wrath. Said Naruto seeing many looking at the wrath hammer and sweating heavily. They had seen what it could do after all. Note to self. Beg Yuzumaki san to never show that hammer to my wife. Also, ask him to turn down any request by my wife to make one for her thought Shikaku, knowing that in the hands of his wife would spell doom for him and his son. Holy crap that's big. 
thought Soom seeing Naruto swing that heavy weapon like it was nothing. Now if only she were a few years younger. Are you done here? I have things to do, said Naruto seeing the councils wanting him to stay so they could yell some more, but Jiraiya just nodded and knew they would talk again without the idiots in the room. Jiraiya, you must do something to keep him contained or controlled in some manner to prevent the demon from turning on us, said Hamura, seeing Jiraiya scoff at them. Like what? You saw what he did at the Chunin exams. He killed the enemy shinobi left and right that were invading. Not to mention he killed Orochimaru by devouring his soul. I like mine where it is thank you very much, said Jiraiya with a hint of humor in his voice. Still, he is the village's weapon and must be controlled. That is his purpose. Said Danzo while Jiraiya rolled his eyes. Like Suna did with the Kazakija's youngest. They twisted that poor boy's mind like a wind-up toy to the point where he snapped and went insane. Said Jiraiya with Danzo shrugging. The weapon is a weapon. It has a master regardless of its lack of sanity, and the master is the one controlling the weapon. The Kazakiage did not have proper control, and this is the end result, said Danzo cossily. And you still wonder why Sensei Sensei didn't nominate you for being Hokage. Ha! Huh? Said Jiraiya before adjourning the meeting with Danzo being forced to take the jab at his pride. Akatsuki HQ, this information is accurate. Said one figure among eight others and addressing them like a leader should. Yes, Pain Sama. Yuzumaki Naruto killed Orochimaru during the Sanin's failed attack on Konoha. Apparently he ripped out his soul, said Itachi seeing some of the members of the group look concerned by that. How is that possible? You told me the boy was neglected since birth. He should be weak like all Jinchuriki his age, said Konan with Itachi shaking his head. I don't know. Sabaku no Gara is considered the strongest in Suna outside of his father and is the current Jinchuriki of the one-tailed Shukaku. He was injured by Naruto before Jiraiya of the San and took him down in his weakened condition to stabilize the seal. After that, Naruto apparently jumped into the heart of the fighting in the stadium and then took down the barrier Orochimaru's bodyguard set up to trap the Sandame Hokage so they could settle old scores. The Sanin tried to flee, but Naruto injured him, and upon making contact with him, ripped out Orochimaru's soul, said Itachi, while feeling a bit nervous himself at the idea of facing Naruto and the Uzumaki Jinchuriki, doing the same to his own soul. No matter how stained it was with the blood he had spilled. This has become problematic. The Kaiubi Jinchuriki is stronger than we ever thought possible. We need to grab him now before it's too late. Itachi you will go with Kisum and capture the vessel immediately, said Pain with the two bowing and then leaving to carry out their mission. How did this happen? Said the only female member of the organization. I don't know Conan, but it needs to be stopped now before the boy becomes a threat to us and our plans, said Payne, simply with the woman named Conan sighing. But Naruto, Ureya is going to find Tsunade Sama and is taking you with him. That's so unfair. Said Tenten, as she along with Guy and Lee on his crutches to see Naruto when they heard the news. You want to come along with us? Said Naruto curiously while Tenten looked hopeful with stars in her eyes. Can I go with you? Please. 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 Tsunade Sama is my idol. I want to be strong Kanoichi just like her, said Tenten while bouncing about in front of him. Well it couldn't hurt. Do you have a problem with it Gai-san? You're her sensei after all, said Naruto while Guy was in thought about it. Well, said Guy before seeing the murderous aura surrounding Tenten and her pulling out all sorts of weapons, seemingly from out of nowhere. Say yes or you are dead. Thought Tenten while the words were clear in her eyes. Of course. My student is meeting her idol after all, said Guy with a hearty yet nervous laugh while backing up a few steps. Yai. Thank you Guy sensei Said Tenten, as she went from potential murderous psychopath with many sharp weapons in her hands to the sweet lovable girl Guy knew and hugged him before skipping away while humming a tune. Guy sensei what did I witness just now? Said Lee with Naruto letting out a laugh and Guy looking nervously at his student. What you saw my youthful student is what happens when you don't make a woman with shinobi training happy for the briefest of moments until she get what her heart desires, said Guy with Lee nodding and writing this down. I shall make a note of this sensei, said Lee while Naruto shook his head at the two. Yes. Please do write this down Lee. It may save your life one day should you ever face such an event like this personally, said Guy in an all-knowingly voice of a teacher giving his student advice. Those two will die virgins thought Naruto while leaving them to their own devices. Going to find Senju Tsunade. Said Kakashi having appeared casually by the corner of an alleyway. What business is it of yours Haddock? Said Naruto with a scowl on his face and looked at the Jounin. It's my business Jounin because I'm your Jounin sensei. Until you are promoted, I am the one responsible for your well-being and need to know everything you do, said Kakashi simply while Naruto scoffed at him. That and you want to make sure she heals Sasuke's injuries I gave him, said Naruto, as he saw Kakashi frown a bit. That too. When she gets back here to become Hokage, I'm moving for your dismissal from the Shinobi program and brought up on charges, said Kakashi, before walking away with his plan now in motion to hurt the boy further. 
if Naruto continued with the mission to the fullest extent, the Jounin would get what he wanted, and the Jinchuriki would be removed from the shinobi ranks, while being locked away for his crimes. On the other hand, Naruto could easily use this mission to get away from Konoha and become a missing nin with Kakashi volunteering to hunt him down. You think that scares me, Haddock? Said Naruto making the Jounin stop. It should, Kakashi simply stated while Naruto walked up to the man until they were face to face. It doesn't. The shackles you and the rest of the village have used no longer hold me. As I told you before Haddock, the people in this village and the councils fear me now. It does not matter what the councils pull once you make your move. You will either bow before me or die. Said Naruto with a sadistic grin on his face before walking past Kakashi. We'll see about that thought Kakashi while seeing Naruto walk away from him. Some time later, I was hoping it would be just the two of us traveling together Naruto. We do have a lot of time to make up for on account of the Sandame's actions, said Jiraiya seeing Tenten scowling at him. Let her come with us Jiraiya. There is no harm in it, said Naruto casually, since another pair of eyes couldn't hurt to find their target for this mission. I was hoping to train you in some of the skills your father had in his arsenal that I taught him, Jiraiya simply stated. Like what exactly? said Naruto curiously. This. Said Jiraiya before making an orb of chakra in his hand. What's that? Said Tenten seeing the thing manifest itself. It's the Rasengan. The Yandame Hokage created this little number before teaching it to me. Took us both years to get down, said Jiraiya before wincing when in realization of calling the boy's father by his title. Wait. You just called Naruto's dad the Yandame Hokage, but that would mean said Tenten before she looked from Jiraiya to Naruto, back to Jiraiya again, and finally at Naruto currently finding her actions somewhat amusing. Nice going big mouth, said Naruto with Jiraiya looking sheepish. Oops. Said Jiraiya while Naruto sighed. Moron. Said Naruto while seeing Tenten looking ready to crash. You're the son of the Yandame Hokage. Said Tenten at last while pointing a shaking finger at him. That's not really common knowledge, and I would like to keep it that way for now, said Jiraiya, well glad no one was around to hear this conversation. Oh. Said Tenten simply while looking sheepish. Come on. We have a Sanin to find. While traveling, I will help you with your training, and Jiraiya can help with mine, said Naruto seeing Tenten looking excited though when she saw the cruel glint in his eyes, it became fearful. This is going to be one of those pain-filled training session, isn't it? Said Tenten while Naruto just let out a chuckle. Would you prefer something less challenging? Said Naruto seeing Tenten's eyes flare with fire. Of course not. Tsunade Sama would meet such a challenging training session head on, and so will I. Said Tenten with righteous fury in her eyes, knowing her idol would take on all kinds of training to get stronger. Good to hear. Your first lesson for today is how to dodge quickly. Said Naruto while making a light spear and suddenly throwing it at her with Tenten barely dodging it. You jerk. Warn me next ah. Uh. Said Tenten before dodging another and another with each spear nearly hitting her each time. You think your enemy will warn you? He or she will not show you mercy. This is the way of the world. Now move like your life is on the line. Said Naruto throwing more spears at Tenten, and the Kanoichi was doing everything in her power to dodge them. Good thing I'm the one training him, and not the other way around thought Jiraiya, while he sweat dropped at seeing Naruto's method of training the girl. This was going to be a long trip. But the elder gods, the boy is becoming too powerful. You must allow me to stop him, pleaded Raiden to the other elder gods. No you will not. Yelled the elder gods, as they were tired of hearing this from their fellow elder god, and his attempts to usurp the laws set by them. The boy will spill cause chaos, destruction, and bring about violence to Earthrealm, just as Shao Kahn did. He is the emperor's legacy. Said Raiden seeing the elder gods were glaring at him with their smoldering eyes. The boy is a citizen of Earthrealm by his birth alone Raiden. This was made possible the moment you took Shao Kahn's progeny from Outworld, and he had children of his own. You made this happen Raiden, and we are well aware of your influence on those around the boy when growing up to ensure his stunted growth. You have done enough to him Raiden. You can only interfere in the lives of mortals so much before reaching a limit to your right to interfere, and you have reached your limit. Said one of the elder gods taking on a spiritual female form. And if the boy does something that endangers the realms. Said Raiden seeing them pause for a moment. If Yuzumaki Naruto threatens to destabilize the realms, then we will interfere to stop that from happening and command him to stop his actions before they cause disaster. Until then, we can do nothing to stop him and just watch his progress for now, said another elder god with an ethereal male body that resembled a viking warrior. The moment that boy steps out of line I will end him. Thought Raiden before vanishing in a flash of lightning. But Naruto, you're a jerk, said Tenten, as she was bandaged up and scowling at him. Please. You had it easy compared to what I went through to get where I am right now when training for the Chunin exams. So quick being a baby, said Naruto while sitting down in a chair next to her bed, while Jiraiya went about gathering information on where Tsunade might be in hiding. 
and by gathering information, Jiraiya meant peeping in bathhouses, going to the various red light districts to hit on women, etc. I believe it considering you have the muscle that beat Niji within an inch of his life in the Chuanan exams, said Tenten while blushing when looking at his semi-exposed torso with all that muscle mass behind it. And how is your teammate? Said Naruto seeing Tenten shrug. Still being Niji. Though I think the whole idea of fate is declared me the winner is out of his system, said Tenten seeing Naruto grinning at the memory. Good. Even I don't think I can get away with beating him a second time with that level of brutality, said Naruto letting out a chuckle with Tenten laughing too. A knock at the door interrupted them. Uzumaki Naruto, said a semi-quiet voice of the shorter of the two people currently standing outside the room Naruto was in with Tenten. Depends on who is asking, said Naruto seeing the taller one with blue skin smirk. The Akatsuki, said the shorter man of the two. Never heard of you, said Naruto with Itachi frowning slightly, though clearly not by his words. More like how Naruto looked from what he expected to see. You are to come with us. Peacefully. Said the shorter man though his taller companion was clearly hoping that wouldn't happen. I'm on Itachi, the guy's not going to go quietly with us, and certainly not peacefully. I can smell blood on him. He's like me. He's a fighter. Said the tall man with a bandaged sword. It's a shame we're not an outworld. The emperor would have loved to have an agent such as yourself on his side, said Naruto with a blue-skinned man frowning in confusion. Huh? Said the man with a shorter one named Itachi sighing. Enough kiss him. You are coming with Naruto. This is not negotiable, said Itachi before he moved his head slightly to the left on account of the kunai thrown from behind Naruto by Tenten. The hell it isn't. Said Tenten, as she saw Itachi look beyond Naruto to see the girl get off the bed and now have a sword in hand. What should we do Itachi? Maim them both and take the Kaiubi Jinchuriki afterwards in the aftermath. Said Kisum with his partner being silent on the matter. I have a third option, said Naruto gaining their attention. A third option? Said Itachi with a raised eyebrow. Yeah. You and your butt buddy get the hell out of my sight before I shove his sword up your ass, said Naruto and shut the door in front of them. But he just said Kisum looking at Itachi, who nodded his head and sighed. Yes he did. Now we have to do things the hard way. Said Itachi simply knowing that would involve violence. Not that. He called us butt buddies. Like we're gay. I am not gay. Kissam angrily stated before kicking down the door and was rewarded with a light spear to the gut. Your attire says otherwise, said Naruto with a grin on his face. You are so dead gawky. Said Kissam, as he broke the light spear and saw the rest of it dissolve away before charging towards Naruto with Samahata slightly unwrapped. Naruto grinned as he dodged the swings of the man's sword, made his wrath hammer materialize and hit Kissam in the face with it. The former Mist Shinobi went flying back out of the room and hit the wall with a thud before spitting out some blood with a mix of some teeth. Benton herself was on the defensive against Itachi with a sword in one hand and several kunai in the other ready to be thrown. She knew of Itachi's reputation for his actions against the Ichiha clan. His own blood. If Tenten knew to let her guard down for a single second would be lethal, and the leaf Kanoichi had no intention of dying anytime soon. You'll have to move faster than that fishy Chan. Said Naruto while covering Tenten's flank so Kisum wouldn't get to her. Enraged, Kisum began locking weapons with the Uzumaki and was surprised the kid was matching him in strength. It just wasn't possible. Clashing with the Wrath Hammer several times, Kisum swung horizontally, but Naruto leaped to avoid the move, then used the opening, then hit Missing Nin with charging spikes that slammed the man hard against the wall. Itachi was caught between helping his partner and watching things play out to get information about Naruto's strange powers that told the Ichiha was somewhat connected to Kaiubi. His power has a certain trace of Kaiubi's chakra, but this power coats his body for an instant, and even then it's not all Kaiubi. It's something else. Something that makes the hairs on the back of my head stand on end thought Itachi while seeing Naruto prepare to strike down Kisum with his mighty weapon. Had Jiraiya not taken this moment to interrupt with a silly dance and proclaim no women under a Jinjutsu could trick him. With the distraction of heads turning his way, Kisum swung Samahada and hit Naruto's side to send the boy flying through a wall. Tenten turned to see her flank exposed to the former swordsman of the mist, and her only hope now was Jiraiya doing something to scare them off. Kisum, we need to move. Now. Said Itachi seeing Kisum make his body go crack in several places. What? Why? We can take on the girl, and I just knocked the Kaiubi Jinchuriki through the wall. Said Kisum while Itachi sighed at his patience being tested. Gureya is more powerful than either of us Kisum, and the Kaiubi Jinchuriki is not so easily defeated from one swing of a sword, said Itachi, seeing Kisum have to roll out of the way of the wrath hammer thrown by Naruto. Is that all you've got? Said Naruto with fire in his eyes walking back into the fight while the wound he received already healed. Run. Said Itachi, as he leaped over Tenten and ran with Kisum, while Jiraiya used a jutsu that turned the entire hallway into a giant toad's stomach. Only for a hole to be made via a dark fire made around the corner though how it was made none of the leaf shinobi seeing the hole. 
Jiraiya apparently had suspicions from what Naruto could see of the dark flame left behind as the San and sealed it away. The Kanoichi of the group was looking at Naruto and putting the pieces together of what she had just experienced in this fight. Naruto was a Kaiubi Jinchiriki. A human sacrifice. She recalled his birthday was on the day of the Kaiubi festival and when a lot of people were out with various objects meant to hurt someone if not carefully used. Or in Naruto's case, could hurt someone if carefully used and on him for what he held. Kaiubi? They called you the Kaiubi Jinchiriki during the fighting. That means you hold the Kaiubi no Kitsune inside your body, doesn't it? Said Tenten seeing Naruto look at her for a moment. I did, said Naruto seeing Tenten frown in confusion. What do you mean by I did? Are you saying Kaiubi somehow got free? Said Tenten seeing Naruto just chuckle at her now slightly worried face. No. I've merged with Kaiubi. It happened during my time training away from Kanoha for the Chuanin exams his knowledge, power, and just about everything else about the fox is now mine to command, said Naruto seeing Tenten's eyes bug out of her sockets. Really? Wow. That's just wow. Said Tenten, as she heard all the stories about Kaiubi practically being power incarnate, and here was the person holding all of it inside his very body. Yeah. Hard to believe, isn't it? Said Naruto with Tenten nodding since it was hard to believe. We need to move. Just because they ran off doesn't mean they won't come back later. With Tsunade on our side, they won't dare make move and would need reinforcements to even try, said Jiraiya with Naruto narrowing his eyes at him before grabbing the Sanin and slamming him against the wall. And how do you know that Jiraiya? You weren't surprised at the sight of them when they came for me. You didn't even react when mentioning I was the Kaiubi Jinchiriki in front of Tenten here. Why is that? Said Naruto with Jiraiya trying to get free from his iron grip. When I wasn't tracking Orochimaru, I was tracking the Akatsuki and their interest in the Biju sealed into Jinchiriki. It's not easy getting into their organization, and I told Sensei all about them. I told him that you need to be training hard in all aspects of being a shinobi, and he told me that you were. That you were making progress in your training on leaps and bounds so there was no need to worry, said Jiraiya before Naruto after a few long seconds let the man go. In other words, don't check up on me personally and catch the sand aim in a lie, said Naruto with his anger now channeled towards the old man. Pretty much, said Jiraiya while Naruto looked ready to smash something. I assume you know where to find Tsunade. Said Naruto seeing Jiraiya nod since his spy had provided the necessary intel to find her. Yeah. A city northeast of here, but it's near the border of Fire Country, and if we spook her well she's going to run for it. The sand aim has tried for years to recall Tsunade, and she well ignored him, said Jiraiya seeing Naruto's eyes narrow again with a question in his head about the woman. If you are my godfather, then does that mean she is my godmother and does she know about me? Said Naruto seeing Jiraiya grimace a bit. I honestly don't know. Your mother was like a daughter to her. I don't think she would hate you though. If anything, your existence would have made her stay in Kanoha, and since the sand aim lied to me, said Jiraiya seeing the warlord in training nod. Then he more than likely lied to her too. We'll find out soon enough, said Naruto, as he would make sure to beat the old man further into the grave, he had one leg in already and put a blood-stained tombstone on it with the words traitor. Written under his name. Anzuka City a week later, here we are. Nice city huh? Said Jiraiya, as they walked down the streets to the various places where the bars were located, since he knew Tsunade's habits were gamble during the day and drink into the night with a hangover in the morning. If you say so, said Naruto while looking around for the bar Tsunade was currently in to drown her worries away. Why would Tsunade go here? Said Tenten curiously. Well she has a gambling problem. When Tsunade loses a bet involving a large amount of money, she tends to head for the bars and drink herself stupid, said Jiraiya, only to be hit in the head with a club by Tenten. How dare you say such things about Tsunade Sama you filthy pervert? Said Tenten with female fury in her eyes, while Jiraiya massaged a giant lump on the back of his head. Damn troublesome women. Always hitting me for every other thing I say no matter what it is. Thought Jiraiya while Naruto let out a chuckle she's this way. I sense her power, said Naruto before heading towards where he was sure Tsunade was located. Sure enough, they entered a bar to find a blonde big-breasted woman drinking sake with another woman holding a well-pampered pig, and it was clear she wasn't in much of a friendly mood. None of that mattered to Naruto, as he had a job to do and needed to get it done now. Tsunade Haim. Shizun. Said Jiraiya loudly while walking over to her with a smile on his face. Jiraiya. What the hell brings you here? said Tsunade while seeing the man sit down across from her, and he was soon joined by the others with him. The woman beside Tsunade couldn't help but blush at the sight of Naruto's muscled body before her and had to look away quickly. Naruto smirked slightly in his mind, which had a slight perverted streak to it, most likely thanks to Kurama's and Shao Kahn's help in that regard, enjoyed the sight of the woman falling slowly under his spell and knew this one was shy. No doubt being shielded by Tsunade if the woman's fearsome reputation from what Jiraiya and Tenten each mentioned about her was in fact true. You know me Tsunade. 
I'm traveling and doing my usual thing, said Jiraiya, while he let out a hearty laugh before Naruto smacked him on the back of the head. Stop playing the fool and tell her already. Said Naruto impatiently at the Sanin. Tell me what? Said Tsunade while seeing Naruto and felt a chill run up her spine. Orochimaru invaded the village and tried to kill the Sandame. The old man survived, but he's too old to lead Konoha anymore, and the village needs you to come back. We need you to become Gandame Hokage of Konoha, said Jiraiya, while Tsunade looked at him for a moment and then scoffed with a mocking laughter. Hokage? Ha! Why would I want to be the Hokage of the Leaf? It's a fool's dream to be Hokage and ends lives. Said Tsunade while Jiraiya frowned at her, and Tenten looked like someone had just told her Santa Claus wasn't real. Tsunade sama said Tenten, as she couldn't believe her idol had just admitted such a thing about the title of Hokage, and to an extent Kanoha itself. I'm sorry to hear you say that Tsunade, said Jiraiya seeing the bitter look in the eyes of that woman. Time changes people Jiraiya. Same with losing them too. My grandfather, granduncle, Dan, Nawaki, and the Yandame all died for the dream of being Hokage. The only one left is the Sandame, and he's getting on in his years according to you, said Tsunade with Naruto narrowing his eyes at her. What makes you think the old man's going to live past the next few weeks? Said Naruto while Tsunade looked at him with suspicion now. And just what are you implying Gaki? Said Tsunade while Naruto grinned predatorily at her. I'm implying that the Sandane will die by my hands whether you say yes or no to the position of Hokage. That your belief regarding the title of Hokage means nothing to me. Besides, you aren't worthy of the title anyway. I smell fear on you. The mighty Senju Tsunade is afraid to head back to Konoha and fill her grandfather's boots. I don't see a great woman Jiraiya here speak so highly of or the idol this leaf Kanoichi would have defended up until now. I see a frightened child in an old woman's body. To think the people of Konoha want you to be their Hokage. Ha. Huh. Don't make me laugh. Said Naruto with Tsunade move from her seated position and punched Naruto right in his helmeted skull that sent him flying through the wall of the bar into the next building. Hein, I won't make you laugh. I'll just make you cry out in pain. Said Tsunade after having heard enough from him. Tsunade you shouldn't have done that, said Jiraiya before being grabbed by Tsunade and facing the glaring woman now less than an inch from his face. And give me one good reason why. Said Tsunade with Jiraiya letting out a sigh. Because Tsunade that was Yuzumaki Naruto you just hit. Your godson, said Jiraiya while Tsunade's eyes widened in disbelief and looked where she sent the kid flying and rushed out of the bar. Only to see Naruto suddenly appear in front of her in a shadowed flash of red and landed a right hand to the woman's face to send the Sanin flying back into the bar to the very table she left. Looking up, Tsunade was shocked that Naruto hit her with such strength, but the speed to back it up and the fact he did it at all was surprising too. That's one of many I owe you for abandoning me to go off drinking and gambling. Said Naruto, as he punched his palm in front of her and his eyes were smoldering with fury. Abandoned you? What are you talking about? The Sandame told me you died. He said the Kyubi's chakra overloaded your body. That only a pure-blooded Yuzumaki could have contained its chakra without succumbing to death, said Tsunade, as she felt the bruise on her face already forming, and damn did that hurt. And you believed him? You didn't ask to see a body? Said Jiraiya seeing Tsunade look away. I was devastated. I already saw Kashina's body like all the other people close to me I've lost over the years. I, I didn't have the courage to look at a child's burned corpse that belonged to her, said Tsunade with Naruto looking infuriated by this news. Damn that old man. I should have and will rip out his soul like I did Orochimaru's. Said Naruto while his body was consumed in a blood red aura. Jiraiya what is going on? What has happened to turn my godson? Said Tsunade seeing Naruto's power consume the bar and scaring everyone in it. A lot, said Jiraiya while seeing Naruto being fueled by his incredible power to cause damage to something. Senju Tsunade. I hereby challenge you to mortal combat. Exclaimed Naruto his mind lost in the rage he was feeling before he pointed at Tsunade seeing looking shocked at his proclaimed challenge. Whoa. Naruto, you're going a little overboard here. Calm the hell down. Said Jiraiya before Naruto's bloodlust filled eyes turned towards him. You wish to fight me too Jiraiya. Fine. You can help Tsunade fight. It's quite clear she needs the help being weak and all, said Naruto seeing Tsunade looking pissed off now. Weak? I'll show you weak after I shove my foot up your ass. Said Tsunade getting off the ground and ready to hurt him. Fight. Yelled Naruto with a feral smile on his face. Shit. Muttered Jiraiya as he leaped into the fight, ignoring the bartender, telling them to get out, and the people running from the brawl now occurring. Denton could only watch in awe and fear at seeing these three do battle. Naruto may have been outnumbered, but his power more than made up for it, and neither Sanin was able to handle him alone. When the two used teamwork, they were able to push Naruto back, but the moment the Yuzumaki brought out the Wrath Hammer well things got destroyed and caused quite a bit of damage. 
Eventually, the fight left the bar, what was left of it, and took to the streets with Naruto knocking Jiraiya into a wall, while Tsunade landed a few solid blows with her fists before hitting him with a roundhouse kick to the face that sent the former Kaiubi Jinchiriki skidding back. Is that all you've got? Cried out Naruto before making a light spear and throwing it at Tsunade with the San and dodging it. Damn this Gaki is one tough customer. It's no wonder he killed Orochimaru. How did this happen? Thought Tsunade while seeing Naruto grinning at her and began to form what she knew only Jiraiya was capable of making since the Yandame's death. There is Sengen. Do you like it? Jiraiya showed this to me a few days ago while traveling to find you and I have been training to master it ever since. Said Naruto making a crude form of the Rasengan in his hand, but it was slightly unstable, and Tsunade saw this. And you still have a ways to go. Said Tsunade, as she smashed the ground to shake things up and caused the Rasengan in Naruto's hand to explode to send him flying back onto the ground. Before Tsunade leaped into the air and stomped on him with enough strength to cause a crater. Tsunade stop. Remember he's your godson. Called out Jiraiya while wincing at the blow the kid's wrath hammer hit along the right side of his ribs. I know Jiraiya. It's why I don't tear out his throat, said Tsunade, while Naruto just laughs despite his position. It seems you aren't weak after all. Still, you are far from the woman Jiraiya speaks so highly of and the one Tenten idolizes. If you were that woman, you wouldn't have run away from Konoha and stayed to serve the village instead of letting the fools there ruin it, said Naruto before he had butted the woman off of his body and slowly got off of the ground with his how power receding. Ow. That hurt you big dumb bastard. Said Tsunade angrily while rubbing her forehead. So is you leaping into the air and then landing on me with your super strength, you big-breasted bitch. Countered Naruto with Tsunade scowling at him. What did you say? Said Tsunade getting off the ground and had to be restrained by Shizune. Tsunade-sama. Please no more. You've caused quite enough damage to the area and we will have to pay the damages to the bar if we don't leave, said Shizune seeing Tsunade look at the destroyed building and cursed knowing that was true. Fine. But this is not over, said Tsunade seeing Naruto dust himself off and laugh. You keep telling yourself that, said Naruto before walking away from them. Wait. I have a proposition for you, called out Tsunade to make the future warlord and emperor of Earthrealm stop. What exactly? Said Naruto curiously. There is Sengen. You haven't mastered it yet, stated Tsunade, while Naruto looked at her with a small irritation on his face. Doesn't mean I want in time. What's your point? Said Naruto turning more to face her. I'm willing the bet you can't complete in a week what took Jiraiya and the Yande years to create. If I win, I don't have to come back to Konoha and stay away from it as long as I want, said Tsunade with Naruto now showing an interest in this challenge of hers. And if I win? Said Naruto while seeing Tsunade grab a necklace with a green gem of sorts that was around her neck. I'll come back with you to Konoha to be the new Hokage and I'll give you get this. The Shadame's necklace. My grandfather's necklace. The value of this gem is enough to buy three whole mountains. Win the bet and it's yours, said Tsunade with Naruto thinking it over. Well the gem would be interesting to have in my possession, I need something more and something I can enjoy outside of jewelry regardless of the supposed value, said Naruto with a grin on his face as he looked from Tsune to Shizune and his eyes now flashed red for a second at her. Oh no. 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 You are not having Shizune be yours like some kind of prize. Said Tsune seeing Shizune looking surprised and concerned Naruto would want her. It's that or I walk away to eventually track you down for another fight to bring you back to the village. I don't care if I have to drag your drunk ass back kicking and screaming to Kanoha by your hair, said Naruto seeing the woman looking enraged by the ultimatum being made by him. Why you little said an infuriated Tsunade while Shizune and now Jiraiya held her back. What's wrong? You're so confident I'll lose. Agree to the bet or prepare for another beatdown without Jiraiya helping you, said Naruto, while manifesting his wrath hammer to his hand, with Tsunade running the odds of him succeeding through her head. I accept. Said Tsunade with Shizune and Tenten looking horrified at her for making the bet. Tsunade sama you can't. Don't I get a say in this? Shizune cried out with the two now looking at her. No. Yelled Naruto and Tsunade at the same time. But he's he's a 12 year old. Said Shizune while Naruto let out a laugh that made her jump slightly. Do I physically look like I'm a 12 year old to you? Said Naruto while Shizune gave his body a once over and blushed in realization of what she just did. That is not the body of a 12 year old thought Shizune while seeing Naruto's eyes on her and felt his presence was overpowering. See you in a week. Don't skip town or I'll be very angry, said Naruto with the Uzumaki leaving Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Shizune to talk about things while Tenten followed him. Naruto. How can you make such a bet? Said Tenten seeing Naruto look over at her. Because it's in her nature. She has a habit of gambling Tenten or haven't you been paying attention to Jiraiya when he talks about her? Said Naruto with Tenten getting in front of him while glaring. I don't care about that. I'll admit, Tsunade Sama isn't like I imagined her to be when we first met. What I want to know why you altered the bet Naruto. 
What you're asking of Tsunade and Shizune is perverse. Said Tenten while Naruto just shrugged. And what if it is? You think I'm the only one in the world who would make such a bet regarding another human life? The slave trade has women and men auctioned off all the time. Bets are made with slaves being currency all the time. Winners keep and the losers weep Tenten. And don't say women don't partake in the slave trade and have men as their slaves either, said Naruto seeing Tenten was trying to rebuke him, but saw no way around the truth and let out a sigh. It's still perverse, said Tenten with Naruto walking around her. If you had a male slave, would we really be having this conversation? Said Naruto with Tenten looking red with anger at the idea of herself having some kind of male slave to do her every bidding. Then again it all depends on how just powerful my slave would be and how cute he is when I make him mine. Huh? Wait. What? Why did I think that? Damn you Naruto. You are corrupting me. Thought Tenten while trying to shake such things from her head. I love corrupting people to my side. Just like my forefather in Outworld thought Naruto with his smile increasing while seeing Tenten shaking her head. But Tsunade, Shizune, and Jiraiya. So he's the long line descendant not only the sage of Six Path, but that of an emperor from another realm called Outworld. Said Tsunade while finding this hard to believe. From what Naruto told me in the meeting he had with the other governing bodies of Konoha in the room. I believe him Shizune. From what's been spoken regarding the Gaki's entrance into the Chunin exams, he appeared through a portal of some kind, and his attire is similar to his forefather of an emperor named Shao Kong. The guy did some kind of magic on the kid seal to merge Kaiubi and Naruto together, while putting the boy through the grinder during the whole month spent training. It's kind of scary when you think about it, said Jureya seeing Tsunade's eyes widen, and Shizune now became concerned when seeing the San and stiffen. I don't understand. What's wrong? Why do you suddenly look afraid Tsunade Sama? said Shizune seeing Jiraiya let out a chuckle. Because Naruto's still young and could take on the two of us at the same time on even ground. He's 12 years old and not even fully grown yet. Just imagine what he'll look like when the kid's a full-grown mature adult. Said Jiraiya with Shizune doing just that with the image of a taller, muscular, and physically dominate looking figure. Oh oh, Keikami. Said Shizune, as she realized that Naruto had yet to reach his limits, if any limit at all, and there was not telling when that would happen. The kid will practically be unstoppable, said Tsunade finally. The kid's unstoppable already. I don't know what the Gaki's plans are for the future, but something tells me his plans far exceed the desire to be Hokage, and his goal in life is to strike it big. Said Jiraiya knowing the kid would never consider the position of Hokage, and even if he did it was going to be a very violent transition. So why put it on me then? Why not let the kid have it now? Let Naruto rule the damn village after coming out on top. Said Tsunade with Jiraiya shrugging. Because Naruto won't take the title of Hokage. Like I said before Tsunade, he has his sight set on something bigger, grander, and more prestige in mind for someone of his power, explained Jiraiya, while giving Tsunade a knowing look to put two and two together, in terms of what Naruto wanted. No. He he actually wants to become an emperor. Like Shao Kahn is an outworld. Said a startled Tsunade seeing Jiraiya nod. Yeah. Why rule a village when you can rule the world? Said Jiraiya, who then let out a sigh and took a sip of the drink at a small drinking stand. I see, said Tsunade, as she would probably consider the title of Hokage to be pointless if such power in Naruto's possession was her own and wanted to do more than sit in an office pushing paperwork. What are you going to do about the bet? The kid's potential is immense. I'd be worried if I were you Tsunade, warned Jiraiya while looking from Tsunade to Shizune currently fidgeting nervously with worry that the slug princess would lose another bet. Again. For what it's worth Shizune I'm sorry I put you in this situation and even more sorry should I lose the bet, said Tsunade with Shizune nodding with a feeling in both their guts that the bet was already lost. But Naruto three days later, Naruto himself was mediating in a nice secluded spot where he felt would help him focus his energies that raged within his body in order to complete the bet made with Tsunade. It was difficult sometimes. The Rasengan was not easy to make, maintain, and then use in that order. It took a certain level of power, control of it, and the means to stabilize the orb long enough to unleash the energy. Despite being this powerful being, Naruto knew it was not easy to master this kind of technique, and the one year in Outworld was only the means to reach a level where the lack of control wouldn't be a problem. Kurama's power was incredible. The fox had many memories that even now traveled through his mind, calling out to him, and the desire for revenge against those responsible for putting him in a cage. Naruto himself felt the same way, as he felt Konoha was his cage and desire a way to break free from the walls of the society living in it. He would have to wait. Be patient. With every passing day, Naruto was getting stronger, his enemies getting overconfident, and the bars that were Konoha's walls were rotting. It would be a few more years at least before his conquest could begin, and only after he had gained enough followers to his cause.
it's been a long time thunder god, said Naruto, as he felt the presence of Raiden now standing behind him barely 10 feet away from him, and could feel the elder god's rage, aimed at the earthrealm version of Shao Kahn. The last time I stood before you at this range, the fox was sealed inside your body, and I was having a discussion with the Sandame Hokage, said Raiden, knowing any attack on the boy on his end would result in the elder gods attacking him. I know. Shao Kahn saw the memory of that moment and told me about your little plan you concocted with him to turn me into the village's pet. Though that was the minor part of the plan since you wanted me to be a slave to your own machinations, knowing I was the child of prophecy. I was beyond your direct control. Your very influence. So you had others under your influence use theirs on me to be an extension of themselves, and yours too by that action, should you ever call upon them for help. I'm right so far. Said Naruto with Raiden narrowing his eyes at him. Earth realm needs to be protected from outside forces. Even if the Elder Gods decree no one may attack the realms without their permission, it won't stop someone or something from trying. You were going to be a deterrent from such foes. Only now are you the very thing I have deemed a threat to this realm, said Raiden with Naruto laughing at him. So I am your greatest fear aside from Shao Kahn's return. Doesn't matter. You can do nothing to me elder god. Leave my sight. I have to train in using my new technique, said Naruto waving him off while Raiden looked it angrily at him. So arrogant. Just like Shao Kahn. Exclaimed Raiden with lightning flashing around his body. Leave me alone Raiden or I will make you, said Naruto with Raiden not listening. That sounded like a challenge boy. Are you challenging me to mortal combat? said Raiden knowing once the boy issued the challenge, he was free to attack and destroy Naruto. No. Not now. Not yet. I know what you are trying to do Raiden. I can see it in your eyes and hear it in your voice the desire to fight me without facing the other elder gods. That will not happen until the time is right, said Naruto before getting off the ground and just walked away from the shocked Raiden. Hide me now coward. Called out Raiden impatiently while charging his hand with lightning and prepared to attack. You'd shoot me with lightning in the back. I thought you were honorable Lord Raiden. Don't tell me you've changed after all these years. Said Naruto while looking back and grinning at the angry elder god. I will show you no mercy. For the good of Earthrealm, I will stop you here and face the judgment of the elder gods in the end, said Raiden, with Naruto narrowing his eyes at him. I see. Well then, allow me the opportunity to make the first move. Said Naruto, as he vanished from Raiden's sight and the elder god felt an energy orb plunged into his gut. There is Sengen. The attack itself sent the shocked elder god flying back and looked at Naruto with anger in his eyes before shooting lightning at the boy. The attack sent the boy back and he was crouching slightly to endure Raiden's lightning before jumping into the air with the wrath hammer in his hands. Raiden teleported away a few feet behind Naruto and shot out lightning from his hands yet again. But Naruto wasn't going to be hit so easily as he had used his speed to dodge the attack and then slammed his wrath hammer onto the ground to cause a massive tremor to throw the elder god off his feet. However, before things could get any further out of hand, golden lightning fell from the sky, and five golden dragons surrounded the two of them. Naruto put away his weapon as he saw them surround him and Raiden while awaiting their judgment. While this was happening, the group of Jiraiya, Tsunade, Tenten, and Shizun appeared to see this with shocked eyes. You have violated our orders yet again Raiden. You put all of Earthrealm in jeopardy with your actions. Said the elder gods at the same time. This boy is a threat to the realms. Surely you see it as I do. Shao Kahn is a threat we can handle should he invade. Said Raiden in an attempt to plead his case. Silence. It is not just Shao Kahn you risk unleashing upon Earthrealm, but the other forces lurking in the shadows of the different realms awaiting the day when they have a means to attack without our interference. Had you continued, all the rules we have set forth to protect the realms from destabilizing would be cast down, and Armageddon would have happened. Furia stated the Elder Gods while Raiden looked away from them. And this boy one day ruling all of Earthrealm in Shao Kahn's place would be better. Challenged Raiden while seeing them the Elder Gods looking at him with solemn faces. If dragons could look solemn. Sadly, Earthrealm would be better under his rule. We find the realms would be stable and any threat would be put down decisively by Naruto should such an event happen, said the Elder Gods, seeing Raiden's look of disbelief on his face. I, I don't believe it. Said Raiden seeing the dragons around him scowling. Regardless of what you believe in this matter Raiden, we will not have you defy us any further and we will not punish you this one time on account of Naruto attacking first. However, the boy will not be punished because you provoked him in this fight and has not violated our rules. Do not make such an attempt again or next time we will not be so merciful. Called out the elder gods before they flew away. This is not over Naruto, said Raiden before he vanished in a flash of lightning. No. Not by a long shot. We will meet again and fight in mortal combat like you wanted Lord Raiden. Only when we do it will be on even terms, said Naruto, knowing he was not strong enough to fight an elder god. Not yet. Naruto. 
cried out Tsunade as she approached him and was about to hit the Gaki for making her worry when he showed her the fully made Rasengan in his right hand. I win the bet Tsunade. You know what that means, said Naruto with a grin on his face with Tsunade slumping in defeat, Shizune blushing with embarrassment, and Tenten was red in the face with anger. Gureya was stuck between being perverted and being cautious around the women near him when he acted perverted. Damn it. Take the damn thing, said Tsunade as she threw him the necklace and he caught it with ease. I think something small like this had so much value, said Naruto before putting it around his neck and then looked at Shizune with his eyes roaming over her body. Oh Kami, he's practically eye-humping me. Thought Shizune while walking over to him as Tsunade looked away after tossing the necklace and Tenten looked like she wanted to launch a barrage of weapons at Naruto. Don't worry my dear. The fun won't start until after we get back to Konoha, said Naruto before taking her hand and kissing it while letting some of his power travel through the woman's body to the brain. Bird would influence her to see things his way from now on. I, I understand and Naruto-sama, said Shizune while blushing while Naruto just laughed at seeing how shy she was right now. It reminded him of Hayuga Hinata. Must not kill. Must not kill. Must not kill. Thought Tenten and Tsunade at the same time though for different reasons. Let's go. I have the grave of an old fool to fill in when we get back to Konoha, said Naruto, as he was walking with Shizune beside him now and Tenten following with narrowed eyes at the two. Fucking perverted jerk. Thought Tenten despite the fact she felt a tad jealous right now. Come on you old pervert. Time to head back home and fix what's broken, said Tsunade knowing this was going to be fun. Gureya grumbled and followed after them while mumbling about not getting any respect. What if Naruto Immortal Mortal Kombat Chunin exams? Thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.